Hey, uh, we've got the folks from over on um, Skullboy's channel uh, who are raiding in right now. We're going to get started in just one second. Uh, bear with us while we get a couple things shared around, and then we'll be live with you playing the Big Squirm. Wait, I should do it. Y'all were the most eerily silent of any group. Whatever I said, here we go. Uh, it was crazy. <laughs> uh, we are live here on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. My name is Tony Vicenda. I'm Chief Alchemist here at Plus One EXP, which is a weird little brand that multi classes in tabletop game design, beard, and skincare alchemy in the Bardic College of Content Creation. Our hope and desire is to help amazing designers find great players who love their games and amazing players find great designers whose games they can love. Uh, today, we are doing that in the most fun way you can, which is sitting down to just play a game with that designer we've got a great crew here folks i love to play with uh plus somebody who's joining us for the first time um and i think somebody who may be joining us for the first time playing a game also and that is the creator of this luke luke i know you've been out a couple times this is your first time we're getting to play together i believe so yeah awesome i think i'd remember right you'd assume so <laughs> yeah i know right uh well why don't you tell people who you are what you do and tell us a little bit about the big squirm 
Uh, so I'm Luke, and I, I I write stuff for games, mostly stuff for games rather than systems. Uh, but that's a whole other thing. Um, so the big squirm, it's for Troika, uh, and it came up because Dan was like, "Hey Luke, we need we need something a bit more urban for uh, for Troika. We need something set in the city." And I was like, "Okay." Uh, and then I just so happened to have been reading about the uh, Dutch tulip bubble, uh, and it and it all kind of came together from there. Um, so yeah, it's kind of taken on a lot of weird, uh, noirish tones, and I think it does a lot for Troika, kind of highlighting how much stuff you can throw at the wall and see what sticks, you know? Awesome. Uh, and, and it is live on Kickstarter right now, and I'd tell everybody to go look at it, but Kickstarter is being horrible at the moment, so at some point, hopefully in the next hour or so, uh, you'll be able to hop over to the link right below my face, ttrpg.link slash bigsquirmks. Uh, I'll take you straight to that. If you're watching this later, click the link in the description. It'll take you right over there also, too. Uh, I'm really excited to play, um, so let's meet our other players. Uh, let's start uh, with one of my favorite folks to have on, uh, and that's Chris Bissett. Chris, why don't you tell people who you are, uh, what you do, where they can find you online? Oh, hey. Uh, I'm Chris. I write stuff for games. I am very online. You can find me on Twitter at Pangalactic, and I have a website called Loot the Room that nobody reads. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, not awesome that nobody reads. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> freedom there. It is it awesome like, content that people I want read. And nobody reads it. So. Yeah. It's, it's such a low burden, right? You don't have any sort of yeah. emotional energy that has to go into it if nobody reads it. Right. So, and so, uh, <laughs> excellent. Uh, underneath that, we've got uh, Sean F. Smith. Sean, why don't you tell people who you are, what you do, uh, where they can find you online? Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Sean Smith, as as well you've heard by now. Um, I'm a magician, games designer, writer, general menace. Um, and I'm mostly here from my my obsession with both noir um, and Luke's adventures. I thought you were just going to say Luke generally. Um, but... <laughs> it would have been a good end there. Just just a nice period. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Wait till the end of the stream, and then uh, then I'll open up. I've got I, to, we've got to break yeah. through that bit first. Yeah, I've, I guess we don't know whether you finished mean... my third whiskey yet. I but I did. Know. I did bring bourbon. So oh, oh. 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 <laughs> you prepared more than I have. God damn. Um, I guess we, we don't know if you meant the adventures you write or the adventures Luke goes on. So uh, I guess we'll we'll find out one way or the other. Um, uh, last but not least, we've also got joining us uh, for the first time. We've got Matt. Matt, uh, same question. Tell people who you are. What you do, and if you want to be found online, tell them where to find you. Okay, yeah, no. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Matt Kay. I'm a freelance editor here in the role playing game space. Um, if, yeah, I've worked on like just half a, no, probably a dozen, 15 books now. Currently, I'm working on Land of Eam for Exalted Funeral. Oh. Um, yeah, that's a big book. Um, so, yeah, if you want something edited, developed, and just made generally better than it was going to be otherwise, uh, I'm your guy at a reasonable rate. Haha, <laughs> ad language. Um, you can find me <laughs> at Twitter at, uh, at Ubiquitous Che. That's at Ubiquitous underscore Che, or at my itch uh, with Matthew K. And uh, I write stuff occasionally, but uh, it's only to prove that it, things can be improved upon. Awesome. Uh yeah. Speaking of Land of Eam, if y'all want to check that out this Saturday uh, at Exalted Funeral Con EFCon 2022, I'm going to be playing uh, yeah. Land of Eam on Saturday afternoon uh, Eastern time. Um, so I'm very, very excited to sit down and play that with the greaters as part of uh, Exalted Funeral's first ever online convention. Uh, go check it out. Uh, come join us if you want a weekend of games, uh, panels, other conversations. Uh, please come join us. I think Sean's planning on being there. Uh, Chris is going to be on a panel that I'm hosting. Uh, and Luke's going to be moving. So uh, that's why we're doing this on Monday instead of this weekend and so uh, i'm very very that. glad to make it happen um, okay and so um come so on, i should on. so i should finish editing that book before you go no, play it just, that. Okay. People are, i'm not gonna be show i'm not gonna be holding up pages and saying here's here look at these <laughs> these great edits i'm gonna be just look at this stupid comma <laughs> look at the, why is this comma here Who edited this? an m dash oh my god <laughs> they knew on Monday this needed to be ready by this week, and they didn't do it. <laughs> oh, God. Don't, don't back or kit this game. Um, so, uh, no, with that 
And uh, with all the commerce out of the way, um, we use a couple different tools here on stream to kind of keep us all on the same page, especially when we play with people uh, for the first time or different groups. Uh, those are Lines, Veils, and the X card, unless uh, the system recommends another set of tools. Um, lines are things that may happen in the world of our game, but don't happen in the course of our play of it. They're off limits. Veils are things that may happen in the course of play, but are handled in a specific situation. When we do it, it could be fade to black, move forward, only approach it in this way, uh, just lightly touch on it and move on. Uh, and and then the X card is the ability for any of us to say or type X at any point in time uh, to pause the game, identify an issue. It could be just be confusion. It could be a line or veil has been touched on. It could be something new that we want to add to one of those lists. Uh, identify what the issue is and move forward a different direction. We have a, a strong line against sexual violence on the channel. Um, does anybody else have any other lines or veils that they want to add? No. Don't be generally endorsing awful, I guess. Yeah, like, <laughs> as long as it's not an endorsement, it's fine. Awesome. Condemnations only. Condemnations only. <laughs> um, excellent. Uh, and Bad Quail, thanks for uh, resubscribing with uh, with your Prime stuff. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, with that said, uh, if anybody thinks of any more, let us know. Um, Luke, why don't you give a little sense of the type of game we're going to be playing and then take us into the big squirm? So... Um... You are primarily fact finding here. Um, I'll, I'll give you the whole spiel, and I think the kind of the method of play here is going to reveal itself. So, your characters, obviously, little band of adventurers that they are, found themselves back in the grand, ever changing city of Troika, uh, where there's been a, a bit of a, a kerfuffle, to put it mildly. So, you're in on this. Uh, Notrifiance, the mathemologist, thought he could play the uh, the kind of stock market here. Invested their entire fortune in incredible hat uh in what's called scarf worm futures so scarf worms are absolutely fabulous fashion accessory it's a living worm that you wear but the they have a kind of a camouflage mechanism where you don't perceive them as sensory information when you look at them you just get a feeling inside um some of them might be like when you look at it it feels like you've got a warm bed waiting at home for you uh some of them remind you of the nicest sunset so they're very rare. A big batch of eggs was found, and everyone went mad and started uh, trading in the eventual worms that would be born. The problem, they weren't really scarf worms. They were actually uh, almost like cuckoos, pretender worms, which lay their eggs inside the nests. And then when those hatched, everyone lost everything. Um, but because it's been bought and sold so many times, nobody knows who's actually to blame. That's where you come in. You've been hired by Notrifiants, the mathemologist, who has a lead. He thinks it might be something to do with the Promodurus family. So you have descended upon Downgate Arches, which is one of the most uh, over-the-top, extravagantly wealthy district in Troika. It consists of a huge gulf where there's this kind of ro <clears throat> roiling kind of greenish gold gas at the bottom. There's these huge arches with all the buildings hanging off them on huge chains. Some One of them is just like a big stuffed whale. Some of them are like a demon corpse that's been hooked up. Some of them are just conventional buildings that you kind of enter through the top and move your way down. Um, you've identified the Promodulous estate. There's one main way in that you can that everyone's kind of aware of, uh, which is the servant's entrance, obviously. You kind of move across an arch, have this horrible kind of stair, uh, almost ladder thing that leads directly to the roof. From there, there's one main entrance. Um, obviously, you're free to have a look around and see if there's anything else. But yeah, as far as you know, what you know about the case so far, this horrible worm bubble burst. Everyone's out a shitload of money. And you're there to try and determine the real cause of this, who made this mess, because that way at least Notrifiants can take them to court and try and get some of their money back uh, for selling false goods. Um, any kind of extras that you'd want to know before you go in here? Um, um, I think people are really interested in the chat and what worm coin is currently trading at in the universe. <laughs> well, it's plummeted. It's 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 worth nothing. It's worth less than the uh, worm it's printed on. All right, you know. <laughs> what what is what is like uh, suspect arrest protocol here for us? Are we are we private sector detectives here? Are we officially licensed by the Troika State City <sighs> Council? Like Troika doesn't really have a police force, Surprising. so anything goes. Obviously, if you're going to make a big ruckus, a lot more people might be interested in like. Oi, oi, what's going on there? Um, but as long as you don't make too much noise, although the issue you've got, uh, obviously, Nostrifiance is not the only person who lost money here, so there's a lot of other investigators creeping them out. So that's okay. another thing to keep an eye out for. 
Okay. Rival dicks. Exactly. Plus whoever else gets involved. And they are dicks. From what I heard. <laughs> you gotta let the joke go unstated. That's the key. You just, no, you just flatline it. You I like to kill the joke. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And do we have access to a car or transportation? So, there's um, a new... Uh, another thing that swept through Troika is what's called oh. a silver gondola. Which is like a golden barge, but it only works inside Troika, and they're almost as expensive, so they're not worth the money at all. So obviously, the rich people love them. Uh, if any of you feel like your character is particularly wealthy, you might start with access to a silver barge. Uh, sorry, silver gondola. Um, and if not, then you might be able to try and flag one down. But again, it's usually uh, only only rich folk who's who's using them. Okay. Okay, and we are at the estate currently. The, so you, you, you've scoped just... out from maybe across the chasm that makes up the main part of Downgate Arches. Okay. So what you can see here, it's like a big box of wood and glass. You can see what look to be elevators kind of running down either side of it. This thing is like big. It's very, very wide. You can also see at the very bottom of the building, there's a pair of docks, one of which is huge and looks like it's set up for like a golden uh, barge to dock into. Another which is a lot more sleek and newer looking, and you're pretty sure that's a silver um, gondola uh, dock point as well. Uh, you can't see anything else from kind of a long distance. Obviously, if you get a little bit closer, you'll be able to determine more. But and I say, you can see that there's like a ladder that goes from the top of the arch that it hangs from down to the roof to allow kind of servant access. Do we know what the main purpose of the actual like this building is? Uh, it's the family estate of the Prodromus family, uh, who your client believes is heavily involved, but they can't prove it. This is what they've heard in the rumor on the on the grapevine, and they want you to determine the truth of the matter. Mm. Okay, so are we greeted by staff when we're headed towards the estate, or is it just come on in, it's chill, we love the pores? As you're kind of walking over along the uh, top of the arch, kind of looking down at it, kind of okay. winds blowing, um, you can see on the roof um, there is what looks like it's kind of a perfectly like flat roof. The edges, there's like a courtesy rail that looks like it's like made of gold or at least something painted to look like gold, but it only comes up to about knee heights. So it's almost more of like a vanity one than it is like a real one. So if you got shoved, you would fall. Um, you can also see as you're kind of looking there, there's this huge kind of like stone golem looking thing. It's kind of all made up of these like grinding rings, big heavy hands. And it is seemingly like hunched over this like much smaller, very vulnerable looking figure uh, atop the roof. Um, though as far as you can tell, like this big stone figure, he is very daintily kind of picking up a blanket and trying to wrap this little figure in a blanket. As far as you can see, uh, he is kind of facing away from you. And you can see that behind this kind of little tableau, there's like a, there is like what looks to be a big hatch, basically, that looks like the main entrance. Okay, okay, so they're distracted. So I'm going to take a shaving of this railing gold um, for paint. evidence. It's just Fuck. paint. <laughs> I keep it as evidence. Yep, yep. Fuck. Ah. Look, we want to be sure of everything we've got here. It could all be important. Yeah, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need some glass vials at some point. Everybody t take a note. We're going to need baggies. All right, um... Who wants to take point on this? Because as a as a giant bat creature with ripped jeans and no shirt, I'm I'm a little off putting. I'm told. I'm told. You're Maybe probably best at that. actually fitting in here and not drawing too much attention to us, though. I I look I look directly over at you and say, "Was that a pudding joke?" Okay. <laughs> I laugh nervously. Yeah, like I do not understand if that is or is not a pudding joke, but I'm going to say that's an invitation to take the lead. So I walk right up to the golem, uh, putting in the blanket on, I assume, a, a person in need of a blanket. So and... as you kind of approach uh, this huge, kind of... and it is fearsome looking, there's like studs, spikes, everything. Uh... Um, it kind of looks at you and it kind of like. The company of your domicile secure is securing this building. Please leave if uninvited. Uh, I whip out my proper identification, TM. Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Best item of the game. 
and I'd say, uh, yeah, we're, we're here under uh, uh, Troika City Regulation Commission 50-92B7 pudding. Look back at you. <laughs> uh, uh, to investigate uh, recent goings on, stock market crash, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's all very boring, but uh, if you could just show us to the, the estate. So as you're saying this, the figure on the floor, you realize like though they've got a blanket, where they aren't covered by a blanket, there's some sort of like glimmering net almost that's like covering them. Okay. Uh and they, they're kind of looking at you. He's kind of got this like smile, like he's kind of uh he's he's blissed out on something. And he's like he kind of mouths he looks you in the eyes like there's no such thing. He just mouths it to you, but he doesn't say it aloud. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, the big robot thing kind of takes the card and is scrutinizing it real close. Um, as he is, you get a chance to look more at him. So he has these kind of like large shoulder launches almost. And you can see like within there's more of that kind of netting stuff. Um, but he seems pretty taken with this idea. He's not giving it back. He's just kind of staring at it very thoughtfully. So... I'm just going to let that so drag out to leave. We have been ordered that none may leave or enter whilst the family is away on business. Oh, the family's away on business. Okay. Uh, one, two seconds, two seconds. I'm going to huddle everybody up. Um, what the hell do we do? They say it's business. Well, we're business. That's what we've come here for. That's already within his, uh, within his programming, eh? Right. So if we say we're family, no, no. I, we are family and we're here on business. Yeah, I turn back and say we are family and we are here on business. <laughs> just, just straight faced. He looks back at your proper ID. Um, yeah, you may enter, you may not leave. And he hands you the uh, the kind of little slip, and he gestures in like two directions, one in each with each of his huge fists. So there's like one really obvious entrance mm -hmm. um, that's kind of done up to look very fancy, like with like a door, lots of like Ooh. filigree all around it. The other one is a bit more not grotty, but it's a lot more workmanlike, and it's kind of um, main entrance. Uh, sorry, servants. And he, and he kind of turns back around and from his chest he takes out like a little tea set and he starts making a drink for this dude who's like on the floor draped in a blanket. Wow, this guy's got a good he's got a tea serving golem on a rooftop. Goals. Um, okay, main entrance. We do and we go in the family way or the servants way? My, my character uh, is already halfway to the main entrance. Oh, okay, yeah, style, swag. Why would we go in the servants' way? We're not servants. We're well, if you want to find out what's going on in the house, you talk to the servants. Okay. So, you move in pretty pretty quickly. Um, you come down, so it's there's kind of um, lots of like wooden furniture here. There's a big fat book on a desk, but a large paper sign is going to be draped from the ceiling, and in red paint. Somebody's painted a uh, turn back now. Uh, beneath it, as I said, there's kind of this low wooden desk, big fat book, uh, a couple of different pots of different colored inks. Um, there's a few kind of um, filing cabinets sort of thing. Um, one of them seemingly trying to hide is a smaller but still very intimidating one of these kind of stone golem things. And it's kind of like half inside one of the drawers but it looks like it's kind of a bit tangled up and it's pretending that it hasn't seen you okay that's adorable um i've seen gremlins i know how this goes <laughs> um, what is what is the promigious family known for if anything like publicly uh mostly being obscenely rich despite kind of not doing much the big drama was uh the actual kind of uh heiress to it married a golden barge pirate um Ooh. that was kind of like the big kind of all the social rags uh apart from that kind of keeps themselves just quietly accumulating obscene wealth um okay the the okay um i'm gonna pat the little golem on the head Ah, oh, you have sprung my ambush. Oh, 
So he tries to kind of jump out, and there's kind of the sound of squealing metal, and the the final cabinet kind of rattles, and he he doesn't go anywhere. And he just kind of <laughs> looks at you. Oh, submit I, to my authority. Absolutely, I 100% submit to its authority. Like I fall to the ground in a comically parental way. Just, okay, oh, um, he's got me. He kind of this little like the launcher thing comes up, and there's like a, and he's gonna. He's gonna try and net you. Uh, so I'm gonna need you to go ahead. And do you have like dodge or anything like that? I do. Let me. Oh yeah, I gotta bring up a dice roller here. Oh, you can use physical dice, whatever. It's... Oh, I suppose yeah, you're not. Yeah, so maybe... yeah, I'm not there right now. My bad. Uh, okay, two d six. Bam, bam. Okay, yeah, I failed miserably. Tight. Cool. Uh, well, this uh, is actually yeah. a versus one, so you want to roll high. What did you roll? Oh, oh, uh, then my total is amazing. Um, I rolled eight plus uh, nineteen. Damn! Yeah, you dodge out the way as this little net kind of flies past you and just <laughs> splats against the wall, and you can see it's kind of uh-huh. dripping this like clear serum. Um, yeah. Insufficient oh. submission. And then it oh. kind of goes quiet, and he kind of tries to jerk again, and the whole cabinet rattles, and he's, he's, he still can't get out. Anybody good with machines want to take a look at this little guy? Maybe give him a mechanical chill pill. <laughs> um, is he sticking out of a file drawer? Yeah, like he's kind of half wedged in. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you kind of judging by how he's moving to try and jump out, you think he was trying to hide in it and got stuck. Can I just um, push him back in? Close the door. <laughs> oh, you can. Yeah, you can. And he kind of looks at you like pleadingly, like "Don't do this." And... Oh, I was just no. Like, oh. You've practiced. Next time someone else comes along, you'll get it right. Um, I'm going to save oh. some of that net that, that net goo just in case it's irrelevant. <laughs> Do you touch it, or it's obviously a clue? Uh, I'm going to take one of my thirty pairs of earrings and scoop it with a nice hoop earring. I yeah. Yep. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so now, now you've diffused the, um, the defense automaton. So you've got. Um, the big ledger on the desk. You've also got three exits, all of which kind of lead off. So, like, you're staying on the same floor. So, one's kind of forwards, one's left, one's right. Um, yeah. What? Where to next? What do you want to? What do you want to touch? What do you interact with? I'm up for looking at this ledger. Yeah, um, flicking through it, especially to see if there's any. See if there's any suspiciously large purchases. So the ledger outside. It looks to be a guest book, but everyone there, um, it looks like you're coming from sort of like a servant's entrance, but like the nicer servant's entrance almost, because all of these people, they're all the visitors are listing what their kind of relation to an employee here is. There's like son of the blacksmith, you know, like Mm. Porter's daughter, stuff like that. Uh, And they're all like that. Like there's nothing in there that kind of makes you be like, huh, that that immediately jumps out at you. Um, These, the worms that were actually, that were actually like the fake worms. Mm Mm-hmm. Do we know where they are commonly they come from? Like what planet or country? Uh, or region? They're all over the place. They've kind of spread ubiquitous. Out okay, yeah, 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 yeah. but like very, very rare, exceedingly rare. The the scar forms are rare, or the fake ones? Both, both are very rare. Both well, are the pretender worms are not very rare at the moment because they're currently infesting the entire district and eating people. Right. Okay. So prior to that, where would I? Where would a chap go if he needed some pretender worms? You'd have to go way out of your way, like significantly. Like you have to go to like a sphere that's been visited a couple of times, if ever, sort of thing. Like, um, because they're such a luxury. The because the pretender worm can only exist where the scarf worms are, um, and scarf worms obviously being such a hot commodity, tend to get wiped out pretty quickly. Okay, does the ledger list arrivals or like where they came from or anything that indicate their origin yeah, point? Yeah, so almost all of them come from some of the uh, like kind of more working class districts of Troika. Uh, there's one or two visits uh, from representatives of the. Let me get the name. Um, of a local, well, a kind of Troikan bank. Um, known as uh, the Bank 10,082 Stepped Heaven. That's like a local bank. Um, 
that's quite significant. A couple of times there's been it's just listed as delegation rather than a name. They visited a few times a couple of months ago. Um, yeah. Mm. All right. Mm. Um, and you well, said that people who are quite so so rich and snooty. They seem to be having a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of lower class guests. Yeah. Does anybody have a camera or a piece of charcoal to take a copy of this ledger? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I just uh, ripped that page out of the book. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what is your what is your character's name? I'm about to get to call them Puddin. Um, uh, it's Abbott Puddin Cromulet. Never mind. I'm calling you Puddin. Um, <laughs> you put it in the name. Um, <laughs> Puddin. What? The, why Puddin? Uh, you said you wanted it. No, no, that is decidedly. Oh, um, I'm going to look said. around for some tape then. Uh, no. And... <laughs> Abbott, you should uh, you should know Abbott that I'm. Fairly known in the uh, in the sense of of etiquette, and uh, that's that's considered poor etiquette in a place like this. Oh, I'm also very worse, we well versed in we etiquette, guys. Um, and I I know that, uh, but I know that because I'm well versed in etiquette. We can fix this. It's fine. Are we are we near like a window? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go and whistle for a cat. Oh no. Is that is this a skill you have or? No, I'm gonna go and just like try and find a cat. I'm gonna go make. Yeah. This. Oh, shit. Okay, Classic no, no, no. Cat okay. I'm so, so, yeah, Chris, we're going to need to get a little bit closer to the cat. microphone for that noise, please. Uh, we need some. As you do that, from one of the entrances, uh, a big English blue cat kind of pads around uh, and it looks at you. Cool. Because what? Well, you can, you can talk. Yeah, and what? How are your claws doing? Like, do you need a scratch? Well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no. Because this is dead good for scratching. He kind of jumps up, kind of saunters past you. Listen, I know that you aren't from around here. I know that you doing something weird. If I scratch your book, you'll scratch my back. Not yeah. not literally. There's... I'll scratch your tummy if you want. No, there's someone you need to talk to. If I want to scratch your tummy or in general. In general, listen. Right? <laughs> he kind of hops on the book, scratches the shit out of the book. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to find a way down. I've got a bit lost, but you need to talk to Fishbone. He's got a use for you. So who say that again? Fishbone. Fishbone. The cat. And and sorry, just for well, this this cat's mannerisms. Is the cat drunk by chance or? No, this is just, he's just a bit of a bloke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a bit of a bloke. I'll talk to Fishbone, yeah. Right, I'm going to hop in your pack. He, just, he yeah, hops yeah. in your pack. I'll introduce, but as I've got a bit lost. So um, you stay We'll be right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I can't remember the way back to Fishbone. Um, I've got, I've got, I've got skill in tracking. Your skill in tracking. Yeah. That's really he's convenient. Tracking me. His wish, his fishman's not a wizard. He's just a cat. He's just a cat. Damn. <laughs> I fucking hate wizards. Noted. Well, <laughs> I've told you, you need to get out of that game. It's it's a mugs game. Well, I'll end up dead. Right, we need to get Sorry. down. Let me have a look here. He's obviously, he's having a little think. Is the cat. I need to work out where the fucking cat comes from. <laughs> 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 It's difficult when you just got your video. You haven't looked yet. Um, You're welcome. You prepared this whole time. You're like, oh, the cat. Shit. I need its origin oh, story. Or I'll never get this film deal. <laughs> if only someone <laughs> hadn't introduced a cat into this. Uh, just I mean, that's, that's, that's the Chandler thing, isn't it? If in doubt, a cat comes through the window with a gun. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 assu I assume it comes from the Catlands and it has yeah, a jazz band in tow. Yeah. yeah. Right, we need to get down to floor two. This is floor four because it's inverse. Because you know it's a it's a house that's suspended on a chain. That makes sense. Yeah. Need to get right. down two floors. I reckon there's a lift. I don't know how to work it because I'm a cat. Um, Can we just go down the outside of the building? 
If he had an off route, yeah. I mean, if you, if you have a look in that sack, because I don't want to put my hand past you, that's rude. I've got a really good, like, witch hair rope in there. Bloody hell, it's like you've come perfectly equipped for this situation. It, he, it's he like with one there, isn't it? He rustles about, and, like, with his little cat paws, using his claws, he starts feeding out this rope. How much rope do you have? I have witch hair rope, and I don't know how much of it there is, because it's I mean, Troika. It's, it's 500 witch. feet. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's kind of as long as it needs to be. I mean, how old hair. was the witch? That's the question. That, how old was the witch? Witch hair just question. can't be broken oh, by I'm anything other than magic. I'm going to for how old the witch was. Hang on. Right. <sighs> Someone asked Dan Sell. She, she, was, she was 90, exactly, so it was pretty long witch hair. Um, <laughs> hey, well, that'll, that'll probably, well, right. All right, okay. Yeah, you need to get down two floors um, and not get spotted, though I suppose he's going to spot you on the outside. Well, who would spot us on the outside? Are there, like, air patrols? Is Judge Dredd out there? Like, what are you... <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm saying I don't think anyone would be out there. Cause oh, okay, okay. Those, okay. those, uh, those defense automata uh, family I had, you know, they leave us alone and they ain't, they ain't outside as far as I know. Right, and that thing kept my proper identification. Oh, that's how you snuck in. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> you got the cat seal of approval. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Because this cat's pretty shady, but... Um, I'm not shady. I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> well, I it. No, you did. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, all right, that's fair. No, no, no you, really, you really did. <laughs> Please stop. Look, we're in, we're in a noir game. It's uh, the internal <laughs> monologues. Uh, you're right, okay, yeah. monologue. <laughs> I have to start every sentence with "yeah." See, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. So we're we're climbing down the rope. I mean, I I can stick to all surfaces, so I don't I don't actually need the rope. But I'll, I'll let y'all, I'll let y'all do this. This is fun for me. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I have so to roll for it. Where we're going and tie it off. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. What do you need? All right, fishbone hops on your back. It's like oh. fly, bat boy. No, I don't. I don't do flying. That's that's <laughs> that's not how this works. I, I hang. <laughs> uh, I give the hangy sign, and then I just walk outside onto the wall. I got void flesh. It's just yeah. You feel these like little cat claws dig in immediately. Like nope, I don't like it. Um, you get used to it. I'm not so sure. As you fucking Spider Man down the side of the building. Uh <laughs> oh yeah, no, I don't even use all four like limbs. It's I just it's just walking. It's not <laughs> absolutely loathsome. Um, yeah, no, I'm sure that cat is terrified. <laughs> so uh, he's as you're going, he's like, "Right, I'll probably be easiest if you. This is horrible. <laughs> if you walk down alongside the lift, that will be easiest, and also make it easy for the GM to determine where the fuck we end up." Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go where the GM, sorry, the cat, um, yeah. tells me to go. <laughs> um, so you go down past a bunch of windows, obviously avoiding them, so you're not seen if anyone does peer out until you end up kind of where the lift is. Uh, so it's like kind of a glass structure. So with like a good wallop, you could take out the pane, and you can see that there's a, just a set of sliding doors on the inside. So you can just smash open the glass and then open up the doors, and uh, in you get. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I, I assume tug on the rope to signal the others. The rope does tug back because there's still some witch in it. <laughs> <laughs> when you tug the rope, the rope tugs back. Yeah, oh, man, Nietzsche was right. We found it. <laughs> okay, uh, so you're all one by one following that procedure. Yes, um, uh, I do. I do want to grab some of this uh, this ink before we leave. Um, Noted. Yep. No, Dan. You got. Do you want red, black, or blue? Um, I'll take red and blue. Red and blue, noted. Um, are you, so before, you basically have a choice. I leave, yeah. um, I'm going to lock the filing cabinet with the automaton in, in such a way that it's kind of like damaged the lock itself, and they'll yeah. leave a locksmith to uh, to take it apart. Yo, humiliated! You don't need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, nothing personal, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, are you going to try and... So, basically, you can either blitz this guy down, in which case it's going to be a skill roll, or you can take your time, but then you're taking your time. Um, how, how do you want to play it? So I slow and safe, fast and dangerous. Fast and dangerous is more fun for everyone, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, it worked out for well for those people in the movies. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, right. Well, one by one, do you want to make me a little old skill roll? Obviously, if you have anything that would help you climbing rope, climbing down a building, larceny, anything like that, go for it. Add it. Yeah. He's um, right. I suppose you've got you've got a certain bat boy to help catch anyone. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Like, all because everything can perfectly attach itself to me without ripping doesn't mean that my arm won't go with it. So, like, <laughs> yeah, like I'm not I'm not super strong. I'm just a bat creature who likes to stick to the outsides of vehicles, or buildings, is the, is the case. Yeah, well, there's something on the plane of the wing. You know, you get it. It's what all is, there. Yeah. What is the building? But but a vehicle moving through space. Truly, you know he gets it. Yeah. The pudding gets it. Y'all gotta get on board. Make your rolls. Yeah, let's see some skill check. Let's go. Yeah, damn. Okay, I'm waiting. All right, I'm looking for four down. Mm, and I get three. Know. Holy shit, you find <laughs> oh, slide down like there's nothing to it. I rolled an eight over six, which is not great. Okay. Um, yep. I might kind of burn a look. Have I, I working, to died? Remember. You can, I'd say you can test luck to, to grab on at the last minute and not potentially plummet to your death. Uh, obviously, yeah. you still have your uh, Void Hanger uh, save there. No! Let's test my luck. No! No, that's a Good god. Seven. Okay, so not only do you fail to climb down, you stop plummeting. The witch is proper um, <laughs> This is a very high-risk way to play things really early in the stream. Um, <laughs> Matt, yeah. are you going to try and help? Yeah, so here's the thing. Throwing things, very skilled at. Catching things, not exactly experienced. Um, uh, I would give you half of what you have in throwing, if that's like a skill that you actually have. Throwing. Yeah, I do have subjects. throwing. Okay, I'll take I'll take a throwing. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Um, I just reached for dice I clearly don't have with me. There we go. That's, that's <laughs> where I'm at right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what is catching if not throw persisting? Exactly, that's right. yeah. That's right. <laughs> Uh, we're also trying to speed run this too, like you know. Okay, we, we want to set. Yeah. Er, we I, set I have succeeded and, under uh, a six. I have okay, succeeded. so you managed to catch and kind of fling your wizard hunter through and into the doors. We'll cover what's there in a second, Tony. It's only yourself. As oh, I made. In. I made mine. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, cool. Damn, some good rolls for climbing. So, you all find yourselves now. I need to fucking flip around the PDF again. Physical book, much easier to run from. Um. Floor two. If only there's a way that people could go help make sure that this PDF turns into a physical book. And if you wanted to, you go to ttrpg.link slash big squirm, squirm ks and do that right now. Yeah, oh, I get it, it because the book's on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> so, after you've come through the the room that immediately the, the this kind of where you kind of got the doors open of this lift, it's all like velvet curtains, very over the top. Um, is David Lynch there? He is not. Okay. Um, Thank God. But it looks like the 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 room that you now find yourselves in. It's a little bit pokey for such grand kind of uh, velvet curtains and whatnot. It's like a little pokey kind of set of rooms. Well, it's like one room that's kind of subdivided by kind of like waist high kind of movable walls, like some sort of office space. Um, and there's all these big chalkboards everywhere. Sorry, American here. What does pokey mean? Like it's it's a little bit run down, not like super super run down or anything. Okay. Um I like that. That's good. But like yeah, it's not not bad. It's not nice. All right, cat, get off my back, quick quivering and tell us what's what. Oh, hang on. I might have grabbed the wrong description. Give me one second, sorry. No, this, that's fine. We're this good. one's not. No, um, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's actually Ronald Reagan on your back. My bad. Wrong passage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was I saying? Sorry. I was saying, um, oh, yeah, so there's these big um, chalkboards everywhere, and they have like tasks like clean the rooms, uh, feed things. But most of the tasks that are left are things either cleaning the room or pet patrol in big letters that's been like circled, and that's what most people seem to be on shift doing. Um, where you've landed, Seemingly, you haven't disturbed a small gaggle of people wearing uniforms in the corner who you can kind of overhear them because they're seemingly pretty heated. One of them's like, No, okay, look, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm just saying if we put down lots of glue, their paws will get stuck. If their paws get stuck, we can scoop them up. And the other one's saying, Don't be stupid. We get a bunch of treats on a string 
and we use that to lure them round. These people have not noticed you currently, uh, but they're, they're getting pretty into it. They're getting pretty into it. Okay. I'm going to ask the cat, like, really quietly, like, are these people evil towards cats? Like, is yes. that what's going on? They're, oh, oh, mate, let me fuck. The staff are the worst. Like, one time, right, I was tearing up the bed as a cat. <laughs> and they fucking, they grabbed me and they told me off. And then they gave me a little B A T H. Awful. Uh, and then they put me back in the pet room. Which is unacceptable, if you ask me. Oh, you're all prisoners. Yeah. Aren't you like a little dog? Exactly. It's fun. And listen, right, I know dogs. Lots of dogs. Friends with dogs. We're all getting on. We've all got one direction <laughs> to pull in. But I am a cat. Not a little... Oh, fuck. Hang on. He ducks back down again. Um, some of the staff are kind of looking towards you at this point because he was the cat was getting a bit heated. Um, and he raised his voice a bit, and that seemingly has tipped him off. So let me just make one little roll here. I'll also throw out to make this worse. Um, I've moved over in, in the middle of all the staff, and I'm just shaking my head at all the suggestions that are getting brought up. Yeah. <laughs> so they can't oh, Wait, hang on. You're not. You don't work what? here. What? what? You... Hmm. Wait. Huh? How did you get here? What? Yeah. 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 I agree. Hundred percent. God, he's an artist. <laughs> they, they kind of look at you. They look at themselves. Because we're really bad at this. No. Okay. Please tell me that you brought food from the outside. It, food from all, the outside. Please. In here? Please. I look. I look incredibly awkward, uh, as if I'm deeply concerned for my very existence. Yeah, I would think so. Um, uh, I pull my my coat tightly around myself, um, and and like I I smell very good, and I'm trying to just not smell as good. In yeah, that they're moment. like nudging closer. It's like uh, subconsciously. Not even whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, I got ten granola bars on me. Don't <laughs> even sweat this. <laughs> for <Say it>. fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say that, they all they kind of <laughs> swivel. They ignore your pudding blooded friend and they're like, Look, you're not meant to be here. We've obviously dropped the ball with you getting in. Let's discuss it over a granola bar. Absolutely. I fuck it. how many are there? Like four? Uh, there's four of them, yeah. Perfect. I, I chuck them each two granola bars and say oh, one man. for you, one you for your mom. moms. And I yeah. say I say, Have you have you ever tried this? And I open up a tin of, of uh of pudding and I go dip dip that in here. Oh man, okay. they're, they're, fuck, they're putty in your hands. They are not thinking straight as they eat something that isn't seemingly the same thing they've been having. So you've probably got like one or two questions before they clock on that you're kind of pressing them too closely because they they are just distracted as all get out. They do not know what's going on as they munch down. All right, I can't ask questions. Juz is very bad at questions. All I'm going to ask is what's your favorite boy band? Does anyone question. get in before that? Or? Yeah. No, no. Like, I want to hear the answer for that. You've got it's your all seconds. I can think about now. <laughs> they fall to arguing amongst themselves. They're very split, it seems. What um, are the names of boy bands in Troika? That's because that's 100% what I want spoken into existence right hey, now. Hey, sorry, Luke. Luke. Take on the boy bands <laughs> Come on, right. So write something for me. <laughs> also, also, chat right now. If okay, you want to okay. kick in. If you want to kick out some it. boy band names, chat, please do. Yeah, this great time. yeah, yeah, that'd be great. This One Barge Hill. This. One uh, Barge Hill. Uh, <laughs> sort of like five, but there's more. Yeah, of them. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Ramp. Um, oh yeah, humpbacked guys. That's pretty good. And the boy zone is forever. Obviously, Zoethrones. Um, uh, uh, see, I keep making them too cool. I have to be lamer as a boy band. Yeah, I'm not no direction. Um, no direction. No direction. No direction. No direction. See, that's a good punk oh. name now. See, that's just good. It's too yeah. cool. Yeah. Badly drawn right. dwarf. Badly drawn dwarf. There we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Um. We got. We got. Oh, chat. Boyzone. Dwarf for you. Boyzone humped back guys. Uh, Generation oh. Z and <laughs> Instinct Backstreet Bones. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. That's that's the one they settle on. Um, <laughs> Before they kind of refocus, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. okay. How, who, how, why? We've got a second question. So if you guys wanted to meet the NSYNC Backstreet Bones, what would you be willing to do? Ooh. They look at you. They look at you. How, how, how much of, a, of, of agency do you look you know, Do you look like you're in the industry? I um, do. There is Definitely. no way you look like you do. I'm <laughs> 
I'm dressed like David Bowie, so. Oh, okay. So Which the, era? I'm dressed like uh, a werewolf, so I could say I'm a roadie. Labyrinth era Bowie. Labyrinth era Bowie. Oh, wow, you Keep are. bumping That's... into things. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, all right, they are, they're, they're being, well, look, okay, listen, we can't leave right now, so we're going to need some sort of, like, promissory note showing that this is good in perpetuity to meet just once. But well, it depends what you're here for, really. Because, I mean, look, bosses obviously don't really care about us. We're not allowed to leave. Um, it's right. just make it worth my while. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're, well, you know, the bosses may or may not be uh, responsible for a certain boy band union infringement. So uh, we're here investigating uh, that. And so it would be in your best interest to tell us anything suspicious that you've noticed uh, specifically anything worm-related, worm-adjacent, even orthogonal. Uh, they kind of, they have a little chat amongst themselves for a second. Well. Oh. I, I do have both useful advice and misleading advice, depending do, on how this wants to go. We do have uh, a large stock of deworming tablets um, for, for the the animals. Have you seen any, by the way? Where is the cat right now? It's in the backpack. It's in. And I say deworming tablets. Never seen them. <laughs> no, no pets. The, the pets. They're running rampant, and we need to get them back before the bosses get back. We think. What about the pet patrol? There's like seven of you on that. There's only four of you there. There's. I mean, all over the place. Everyone's on pet patrol basically because we need to get them back. They are planning some sort of escape. I think. Right. Okay, well, we'll keep an eye out for that. Where did you keep these worming pills? And did you have them before? And then I list the date of the before the before the buy in started on the stocks. Uh, that was about two months ago, roughly. The, the, yeah, the so if they had these things for more than two months. No, they've always had them. That the, you're pretty sure they're standard about, okay. you know, the tablets for, for cats. Um, if we do see a cat, who should we? Who should we? Who should we tell? Any of us, just bring them to bring them to us. I mean, obviously they're a bit squirmy. Can we get a name. I'm Reginald. He's Douglas. Reginald. He's Gary, and he's Larry. Douglas. Any of us, because you know we brought you in Reginald on this. We cut you Gary, in. Larry. Yeah, uh, we cut you in, so we would expect it to be us. Um, so we can, you know, make sure that the um, any promotions that are associated are distributed correctly. Um, okay, you got walkie-talkies. Something we can contact you through the levels. You could just ask for us if you see someone else. How how do how will other people know that we're Paw Paw Patrol Pet Patrol deputies? <laughs> they one of them starts knocking about in some of the drawers, and they get you each a little one of the staff uniform hats. Oh my god! Um, yes. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Sean yeah, actually like... has that hat in collection already. There we go. Hat on a hat, we're doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, we never die. We we finally ascended to spinal tap levels over stupid. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, this is good. Well, oh, okay. there we this go. is not fair. All right, we, <laughs> I, I I am hatless, and 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 Luke doesn't even hatless care. This is Chicago, rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they give you each a staff cap, and they're like, "Look, this isn't going to fool everyone, but at the very least, you can." It's a story. It's far too fucking high in England for that hat. <laughs> <laughs> Instant regret. No, yeah. Chris, it whips the sweat. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, have we upgraded? There we go. <laughs> oh, Perfect. oh, you're right. I do have a helmet. Okay, that's good. Thank God. <laughs> this is role playing games. Oh. Really all right, great. here we go. Here we go. All right. I know it looks like I'm just like struggling with a bowel movement right now, but I'm all right. All right. <laughs> I'm right. Here all right, here we go. All right. Okay, so there, oh, there you go. Reference spear. That's <laughs> really sick. Oh wait, I think I got a violent sticker on it. Yeah. There we go. Oh, BHP. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they equip you with with your pet patrol hats, and they're like, "Look, it's not going to fool everyone, but at the very least, it's going to start conversations." Um, God, we are good looking. Yeah, I say just if you see a pet, bring it to us. Uh, Chris, as this is happening, you can feel 
the cat that you're friends with is like needling your back with its claws. Um, could you just do a little skill roll to avoid giving a little yelp, or or you can just lose the stamina, you can lose two stamina if you just want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna it. lose two stamina. I, I two like pain. Six. Two under six. Damn. Okay. You you just tough it out through the <laughs> of the cat in your back. Um, so the pets are just like okay. Well, sorry. The the staff are like right. We're gonna go try some things. And one of them, Larry's like, glue. Gary, glue. You know, they all agree finally, glue. Uh, and they're going to start mixing up some, like, they get like glue sticks effectively and they start making a big sheet of paper with glue on it. And they just basically ignore you at this point. You know, they're like, look, with, with, with exchange goods, you're going to, you're going to help us find the pets, bring us some pets. We'll give you something good. All right, cool. Well, just, just so we know that we're really cool, I give them a gold watch. Damn, they immediately start fighting about the gold watch. They are astounded. Yeah. It's real gold, too. I know. I asked before I stole it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> while, while they're fighting over the gold watch, I'm going to take the glue. Okay, yeah, they don't notice. You can have a big sticky parchment. All right. I only um, have seven more gold watches now. Oof. <laughs> running low. Fresh characters only from now on. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to even tell you that I actually have a, a set of golden barge keys on me. So, like, that's... <laughs> So from here, past all these offices, chalkboards, kind of divvying up the maintenance tasks, you've got three exits, one that goes back to the elevator, the lift, um, and then two more uh, that you don't know where they lead. Yeah. Um, Cat, Cat, which way to the incriminating evidence? Oh, you're going, you're going towards a fishbone. And he nudges you towards one of them. There's no indication what it's called. It just nudges you towards one of them. We'll go that way then. I just, so, I just start heading off as though I came up with the idea myself. <laughs> so you go through this kind of long, kind of twisty passage, uh, lots of kind of fancy portraits on the walls. They've all got a very like severe, serious look, quite a few of them. Somehow have turned weaponry into clothing, like there's someone in like a sword dress, uh, like a halberd shirt, like there's all these kind of interesting approaches to clothing uh, that's very deadly. And you kind of walk into this huge circular space. Um, it's divided in half by like a mezzanine. And you can see there's like this big kind of set of um, curved stairs next to a little hand cranked lift um, that lead up to this kind of mezzanine. And there's loads of different uh, passages that kind of shoot out every which way. There's loads on the bottom, there's loads on the top. You're currently on the bottom half of this kind of huge round chamber. Um, between them, there's lots of different portraits most of them inhuman most of them are kind of like various like weird like bug men you know there's a couple of just jelly lumps um all of them seemingly have like something progenous as their name um there's also some kind of uh what look to be like weapons and like religious artifacts kind of tucked away in little niches kind of um, sculpted into the walls uh but you can also hear above you the kind of Heavy tread of something pretty big and heavy up there. Is that hmm. is that fishbone? Yeah, he sounds massive. No, 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 that's that's we're not there yet. You need to. Uh, he kind of nudges you towards one that's basically out into your right, so you will pass in front of whatever the viewpoint of the thing up top is. You're pretty sure, depending where it's looking. You need to go to that one, mate. What's what's that up there? Probably one of those horrible robots in it. Oh yeah, I mean they're all right. Have they got like an off button on the back of them? It's good thinking. If you can crack them open and get out the little the little scroll, uh, that tends to switch you off. But I've not seen it. Scroll done. that sounds like wizard shit. Uh, I mean, it's wizard Jason at the very least, mate. Look, you 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 do know that this is all wizards, all all of the thing here, all of it. That's why we're here, right? <clears throat> nobody, nobody told me that. Didn't you read the memo? No. Who reads memos? Like, wizards don't, that's for sure. Those big heavy footfalls above you have stopped. Oh, shit. It's kind of the sound <laughs> of grinding stone, and you start to see this kind of big round head start to emerge over the top of the banister, kind of looking down, kind of looks to the left. And it looks to the right, and you're kind of tucked up underneath it, and then it kind of retreats, and you're like, 
more heavy footfalls. It doesn't seem to have noticed you. Oh, awesome. Cat what's this cat called? Do we know? Uh, this cat hasn't given you a name. Cat, what's your name, mate? I'll ask you to finally fucking ask, mate. You haven't asked me <laughs> what my name is. Wow. <laughs> you're right. Wow. I, I apologise. Goes both ways, pal. Uh, you're right. Nice. Uh, my name is Clark. <laughs> what's yours? Your name's what? Clark. Clark. Clark I'm, a, I'm Harley. Harley Tanner. Nice to meet you, Harley. Wizard Hunter. What you got against wizards? The bastards. Oh, oh yeah, fair <laughs> enough. I believe you. I've never met one. You, uh, don't. you don't want to meet one. No. <laughs> no eat. They notoriously kick cats. Oh, I know that's that's not right, is it? Sometimes they use cat ears and tails in the spells. That was fucking gnarly. I'm not. You know what? I might. I might consider retraining once all this is over. Uh, as a wizard? No, wizard hunter. All right, yeah, yeah. It's dead easy. Like the test, the exams are like a piece of piss, mate. Is it all coursework based or? No, no, no. The exams <laughs> like, it's dead easy in it. It's all multiple choice. So is like, it night classes? Like, yeah, and it's, it. it's and the easy. question is, do you want to hunt wizards? Yeah. Yes. Um, no. That's question undecided. one. Obviously, question one: Do you want to hunt wizards? Question two: Are you a wizard? Like, yes, no. Uh, yes, no. Question three: Did a wizard put you up to this? No, obviously. Like question four: Show me on the model where the wizard hands. <laughs> optional, optional. Obviously, yeah. Some people just hate wizards. Yeah, yes, you, know, you don't need a reason. The bastards, frankly. That aside, um, <laughs> you need to go talk to Fishbone. I know, I can get oh, yeah. a stinky yeah, sack. Yeah. Got a sidetrack. Sorry, wizards are like. Yeah, 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 you know, you could talk all day about wizards. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> and they did. The day passed. Yeah, gently as yeah. They <laughs> the end. Um, <laughs> you could still hear the kind of heavy footfall of this defense or tumble trap above you on the mezzanine. So, how? What's your plan for kind of getting by here? Are you just going to walk it? Like, how do you want to go? I've um, I've got some like. Opera glasses, which have got like rubies inset in the end. Okay, um, yeah. My plan is awesome. basically to look through them the next time that I see the big security automaton passing to see if I can sort of see a like, um, because they, they amplify like magical power, these these glasses. Oh, okay, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and essentially I'm going to look, see if I can almost see like a House of the Dead game where you kind of like you check your palm pilot yep, and it yep. shows you where the point is. Pretty much that. Okay, um, so you wait a bit. Kind of... So you can see there is like a kind of glowing aura that very much is centered in the head. Uh, and you can kind of see the faint outline of what does kind of look like a hatch, but it definitely looks like it's got like an armor plate, again, of stone over the top of it. Um, so it's a tough nut to crack, but if you could get in there, you could definitely kind of dissipate whatever kind of energy is running this machine up there. Mm. I share that with the rest of the crew. I could lead it away with a well-aimed crossbow that would have it turn its back to go and investigate, and then you two could, like, three could, like, pounce. Wait. <clears throat> mm hmm Oh, I didn't have anything. I was just nervous right. about the plan. <laughs> Valid. Valid. <laughs> it's a fine plan. It's, we should do it. It's a solid plan. You don't. You don't need to be scared about this. Well, like, how strong would we say that thing is? Because even jumping it, you know, if it can just fling us off like so much paper, then it's like it's I know we've got. definitely got high like, a lot of armor. It's obviously well defended, being made of stone. Um, they do seem a, a little clumsy, just because the sheer bulk of them. So, like, you know, they're going to struggle to actually get to grips with someone potentially. Um, they definitely look like they can take a bit of a beating. Okay. You've got like a bag full of marbles or something, have you? Checking. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I do. I do have a book on the politics of death, but I don't know. <gasps> oh wow! Actually, I can't believe this will be the first time this is ever relevant. I do have a book on meat bacteria, so keep that in the back of your mind, uh, just in case. But uh, no, I've got a bone torch and an extra set of claws strapped to the back of my already natural claws. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm like ready. I'm ready to slam is what I'm saying. Like, welcome to the jam. But, um, you know, I ain't got any tricks for this. Uh, we can just we just go ham on the on the on the giant golem robot. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get in a fight. Oh no! I finally got the stream working, and now I'm seeing myself like two seconds behind. <laughs> don't do it! Don't do it! Yeah, no, it's. I, I just wanted to see the message chat. That's all. I, I got. You greedy. can pop the chat out so you can't see anything but that too. So. Oh yay! Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm 100 on board with this. Uh, okay. Well, they said, wait, I was already halfway up to where this golem is. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's see which way it was facing as you fucking charge up the stairs. Uh, thankfully for you, it was facing away, so if you want to just fucking go for it, just fucking go for it. Um, it will be basically take a, eh, fuck it, first first hit's free, because its back is literally turned. It's a hard target to miss, because he's big. Uh, so anyone who is just swinging in, just fucking going for it, go ahead, roll some damage for me. <laughs> um, and then we'll do the Troika initiative thing. Um, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll it if that's an option. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can like back out. So, obviously, it's like in the top half of the mezzanine, so you can like back up. Pong! Have yeah, a go. Yeah. I don't want to oh, get yeah. I'm going to crossbow it as well. Okay, I will say. Three, does the, three... How much arm has it got? Because if that's going to shift our rolls. Um, it has three armor, would you believe? Oof. So I roll a three, so that's basically a one. Uh, so I deal four damage. Damn, crossbows go hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, who knew? Uh, Chris, what we saying for damage? Well, just uh, everyone report damage. I uh, rolled if you two, need so that's a one, so four two. damage. Four, Only damage. four damage. Yeah. Jesus. I, I got um, here. I got here first, but I'm doing nothing. He's gonna <laughs> watch his. <laughs> I'm watching it happen. <laughs> You're so not like, doing nothing. You're wearing the badge. You're representing the office, you know? Yeah. Oh, uh, Matt, what were you going in with? What, what was the void hanger going in with? Yeah, with my, my double claws, but I, I got the lowest possible results. Only four damage. Only, only four damage. Yeah, only four damage. That's Look, I, I ripped these off of a dragon centipede, okay? For, only four damage feels insulting. <laughs> so, first cross row, pong, hits this kind of plate. And it kind of like almost like it damages a hinge or something and it falls away. Second one boom, gets stuck in. Uh, and then as you're charging up with your claws, straight into this kind of joint at the back, tearing it up and out. And there's kind of like a boom, boom, boom. And you see this big stone thing kind of stop dead. Falls forwards. In Excellent. It does make a terrible racket as it goes. And in fact, um, it doesn't smash through the mezzanine, but you definitely hear a lot of wood kind of crack from like the beams underneath have definitely sustained some damage. But hey, it's uh, it seems to be taken out. Yeah, now you can see... nothing to see here. Nothing. We're fine here. How are you? <laughs> now that you're on top of the the stairs in the mezzanine, you can see that there's one, two, three. There's four exits out the top half, and there's one, two, three, four in the bottom half. The one that uh, Clark was nudging you towards is on the bottom half. Um, damn, you get so lucky with encounter rolls. Good damn. Um, yeah. Is this thing still on the the floor in front of us, or did it fall further? Uh, it fell face forward, so it's kind of oh. lying on its face on the mezzanine. Um, I am. Uh, I'm going to rat, like rattle around in its head and um, yeah, uh, take its golem scroll. Yeah, it's like a tiny little slip of parchment, just one glyph that you don't recognize upon it. Burn it. Um, Burn it. Ooh, I want to take its voice box. Burn it. Burn it. Well, Ooh, no, because if, if we show this to one of the other ones, then we can intimidate them, see? Okay, Scare. so so like what that's like holding up the head of the guard at the town entrance. Like, is that... Which I would know nothing about. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying that was a little specific, but like... Okay, yeah, I, 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 I get you. Um, yeah, can I rip out its like voice box? Is it mechanical in that way? Like, is there like no, a little it's pure transducer? Stone. It's pure Bummer. Stone in there. Is it is the stone is the stone tasty or? Oh, it's a little salty. It's not the worst stone you've ever licked. Good licking stone. All right, I pocket yeah. one. Wear a little piece. Take a little piece of the the the, the girl, the force of A little finger nub and more evidence. <laughs> Just collecting bits and claiming them evidence. <laughs> this, 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 this necklace if... of ears is evidence Ugh. what happens if you roll up that 
golem scroll like a joint and smoke it. That's wizard activity. We've been pretty anti wizard activity here so far. I don't know. Just I'm not doing it, but it's just a suggestion. It's 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 a bold suggestion. Uh, there's only one we'd find out though. Mm -hmm. Um, Juz offers his body <laughs> for for golem joint smoking, but well, do, yeah, is this the, the time? Do we want it? Yeah, I, I like. Here's what I would say. You want to pick the time where that's going to have maximum impact. So I yeah. say, I say we stick that. Yeah. In the back, and we wait until the right and moment. Setting. Yeah, but like, let's keep it away from the cat on my back currently. I don't trust that cat with a with a fine golem joint. You don't trust me with what? Uh, to to be anything less than cool. That's right. Come on, let's get going. Fish going awaits. <laughs> <laughs> stab, stab, stab with his finger. Maybe we can smoke a bowl with fishbone. I mean, we're what's all... that? <laughs> <laughs> we're all uh, mm -mm. into extracurricular. Hey, look, fishbone will explain. Let's get. Let's get, let's get. <laughs> is this, so are we headed towards an opium den in the middle of this house? Like, what is? It sounds like we're in the middle yeah, of Korean and opium so it's den. Just yeah. Of my God, Luke, what kind of setting did you write? Who let you do this? The kids watch this. <laughs> That's their problem. <laughs> That's the parents' no, problem. Yeah, no That's mercy. Me. Yeah. All right. I've, I've seen the Maltese Falcon. I'm sure this will go fine. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we so, head on. Yeah. As you're moving towards, so you can see that there's a kind of on the wall in this like kind of gold filigree, but painted directly on it, just says the library. Somebody spent Ooh. a lot of time painting this on. But as you're getting closer, you can hear the sound of like dogs barking, cats shrieking. There's like a goat sound, um, a kind of All lizard right. hissing. And as you kind of round the corner, uh, there's these like eight shelf high bookshelves, um, all kind of towering over these like little reading lecterns and little like nooks and tables. On all of the surfaces, there's cats who are like working in teams to turn the pages, like kind of using their paws to kind of grip, and they're kind of cooperating. Aww. There's these dog packs like reading aloud to one another, and on a big mound of books, watching all of this, there's another big, heavy English blue um, cat. And he is kind of watching all of this. And he kind of looks down at you. And he's like, Who are you down there? Comrades. I just go. <laughs> yo, that, yo, we talked about this. <laughs> that is insulting. I do no longer respond to such things. We have been gifted with intelligence. And I intend to use it. Okay, I, point, I, I Quark talked to the will cats kind about of shamefully me. slink out of your bag like I didn't respond to it. <laughs> Come on. You I bear thought... the hat of the pet patrol, and yet you do not plan to ensnare us. Explain just, yourselves. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. I just I've been trying to I've been brushing up on my feline and I guess it's a different dialect. I thought that was how you say hello. Oh my god, it's like referring to women as females. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> We're not hunting them on safari. <laughs> <laughs> I no longer deign to speak in such a manner. No, I as rightly you tongue. shouldn't. Yeah, Precisely. we're we're just we're just here to hang. Activate special hull hanger ability. <laughs> so you start hanging on the wall. He seems profoundly unimpressed. Nah, I'm just um, I'm just here to hang, which means that like I get to roll for a crowd to see how they react to me because oh, I'm a universally so well regarded public figure. <laughs> To be fair, one of the results is frightened. Okay, go for it. <laughs> All right, here we go. This actually may go pretty poorly for us. I, I forgot to look at the table first. I honestly <laughs> hope it does go poorly for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Cool. That's a five. That's um. okay. This is going to get a little sexier than I intended. Enraptured. <laughs> So all of the dogs are like staring at you, and they're like all their, all their tails are wagging like in unison. Uh, the cats yeah. are looking up at you and paying attention, which for cats is the same sort of level of attentiveness. From what I understand. Um, yeah, they like rub their butt on me briefly and turn away. Cats are all like, I see. What was fishbone atop the whole kind of mess. Oh, just yes, you're oh. very suitable for our purposes. Yeah, we have. Yeah, behold, a kind of pause this little pouch that tumbles down some substances that we need you to provide to our animal brethren that is kept up in the levels above 
to free them. Escape is impossible without our larger kin. Right, right. But any workers' revolution has to include all workers. So unless we also free the pet patrol with you, then this system no, will never end. they would see us bound in fetters once more. But they have only their chains to lose, right? If we if we let if we free them from their bondage as well, and then like I show them this fake ass pet patrol thing, it's like look at how desperate they are. That is their problem. They made their choice. <laughs> okay. when they decided to capture us. Okay. We need you to take these pills and feed them to the animals in the menagerie and the livestock they so cruelly keep to eat. The dogs look a bit sheepish about that one. Um, well, <laughs> not sheepish, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the dogs look like they've enjoyed a good sheep recently. And it's yeah, really I feel sheepish. a bit bad about it. Um, Dang. So, so this, like... I will reveal to... Well, wait, why are you here? I never even appealed to ask. What are you doing here? Why, sorry, I've been drunk for hours, sorry. <laughs> yes, well, they didn't only have nootropics in that stash. Well, Mr. Uh, Fishbone, I think this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Uh, and I think oh. we could definitely do what we need you to there. Um, you see, we're, we're looking for something very much about animals and about how this city has been mistreating these animals. See? And, uh, Particularly, particularly any of uh, any of the worms, and I imagine that's probably what you've got there in uh, in that pack is uh, is related to worms, maybe well, inside some of no. your comrades. I may have been ignorant when it happened, but I do recall some records being stashed away in a secret location known only to me, conveniently. <laughs> okay, did, did the cat say conveniently? He did. Uh, I did. Okay. <laughs> Is, now this I cat is alluring. Feel this location that you may find the information that you seek, but only upon the release of our livestock brethren and those poor beasts trapped in the menagerie. Now there is one stipulation: we may not love the staff, but as you said, they are fellow uh, downtrodden peoples. And as such, no one may die. Uh, Will you know if someone dies? We have many eyes, ears, noses, tails, snouts. So no. Quick question. Quick we question. will know. Where Where do you stand on the uh, the the cosmological implications of uh, of animate stone golems? Because right, they're not really alive. Go okay, them. cool. Like that's fine. fine. Whether that's None right or not, I don't know. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. Sheepishly conceals scroll and golem bits. <laughs> oh, sheepishly shit. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's stuck in my head. Probably under this helmet. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, let's go. Uh, let's go free some peoples from bondage. Uh, blackmail a rich family, and uh, overall, that sounds like a pretty good weekday. You may find the menagerie. Uh, he kind of has a little sink. Um, as I scroll through this giant fucking map. Uh, da, da, da. The menagerie is on the floor below. Uh, you may take... If you go back to where you came, there's some stairs that lead down. You may discover it down there. And the livestock are up on the fourth floor. When you say up, do, do you really mean down? No, I mean up. Okay, just make it... Yeah. What floor did we start on? You start on the fourth floor, you're currently on the right. second floor. So you're saying on the first floor is the menagerie, and back up on the fourth floor is where the um, the livestock are. Damn, we missed an entire thing of in the cage, the livestock? We suck at our jobs. Uh, it's what, you know, that's the problem when you're speedrunning. We didn't right. get into the, uh, through the servant's entrance either, am I being closer? Yeah. Um, I do have one question here. Um, is there a ground floor? Um to oh, the floor below. Use any Americans? Oh no, yeah. So there's just one, two, three, four. Because there's okay. no ground. Yeah, yeah, right here. Mm, Not no ground. <laughs> we know what the ground is. Okay, it's lava. <laughs> yeah, that's what every American thinks. The ground is lava. That's the lava floor. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, fishbone kind of knocks down. Um, 
There's fist five... bump, like into having his ring kissed. Is this like that kind of Godfather type no, situation? No, I'm simply the first to have become illuminated through the use of nootropics. And he's like knocking down these little pouches, and inside the pouches, there's just there's just stuff to the gills with these pills. You must feed these to our brethren. Oh, so they gain the 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 burden of sentience. Precisely, and then we may ally with them and free ourselves. Right, condemned to freedom. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. This sounds great. Let's 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 bring subjectivity to cows. <laughs> let's let's do that. It's 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 just like Marx always said. That's <laughs> that's it. You never follow up there. Just that's yeah. Like no, that's it's, it's, it's almost a direct quote. Like what more needs to be said? Like. Seize the means of moo. Let's go. Um, it seize the moos of production. Oh, there we go. See, oh god, eloquent. Um, all right. So, well, getting I'm back up. The editor. That's the. You know what? Here, no problem. I'm just gonna. Is there a window here outside? Uh, there is, but it's very high up and it's very small. Um, That's not a problem for. Oh, it's small. Mm. Yeah, you have to mm. squeeze for it because um, mm. it seems like it's all like, lit by like kind of gas lights, like enchanted lights in here. Okay, we'll take energy. the stairs then. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to the first floor to get the pills. Is that right? You've got the pills. The first floor is where the menagerie are, and then the fourth floor is where the livestock are kept. Okay, okay. Just is very device. stupid, so gotta repeat these things. Yeah, um, sort of. yeah. Let's go. All right. Let's uh, let's go. Do you, oh, do you have any guns? You may wish to borrow some of the owner's weapons. Um, if you go back where you were on the mezzanine, one of the floor, one of the rooms belongs to Calixtus. He is somewhat of a collector. Is Calixtus an ally or an enemy of the people? He's not here right now. Oh, even better, absent. Perfect. He yeah. He's very good at giving me scratches, but also he bought us all as as, as unsentient creatures. So Pro probably should have led with that. Okay, but I get it. <laughs> well, it's the nature of pet ownership, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. Morally okay. complex when they gain sentience, you know how right. it is. So okay. So team, do we do we grab guns first, or are we comfortable with our bad selves? I I mean. We made it this far without guns. That's true. That's true. And like you know, I you know, yeah, we're right. not allowed to kill. That's that's one other thing we can we can point a thing in someone's face. And myself and Harley here, we've we've both got crossbows. They kind of look like guns. All right. Yeah, you're right. If we you, you know you you give somebody a hammer, they're gonna go looking for nails. I get you. All right. Let's avoid the guns. Let's get down to the first floor. Let's let's let's. What, what was that you were saying about hammers? Can we get a hammer around here? Hey, uh, Fishbone, you got any hammers? Uh, amongst the collection Calixus has is something uh, he called the Magnetic Hammer. Okay. Is that a fire album? You're muted, Chris. Uh, it looked like a big hammer. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm a cat. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, don't sell yourself short. There. Okay, I don't need to cheer up the cat sense of self-worth. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting way too into this comrade thing. It's the helmet. Um, all right. So where are we going, team? <laughs> I mean, if we need a hammer, we can go get it. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, but yeah, is, 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 is our desire for hammer exceeding our need for hammer? You know what I mean? Like, Do you remember uh, when you were here to investigate worms? Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> where, wherever we're headed, I'm going to eat one of these pills on the way there. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> no. But you should you should tell us what happens to that uh, when we come back from about a five minute break. We're gonna take five minutes. Sure thing. Uh, we're gonna move around. Uh, let Luke cool down. As is he is, he's like, <laughs> he's like popping his head harder and yeah. harder, taking the perspiration off. Um, but we're gonna take five minutes. Uh, while we're doing that, uh, two things you can do: you can head on over to ttrpg.link slash big squirm chaos. Uh, go help support this amazing. Obviously, you can tell this is a very serious, hard boiled detective adventure. We're mm. we're displaying the 
the, mm. the noir tonal notes really well uh, in our in our mm. actual play here. Um, go check that out um, uh, live right now over on Kickstarter. Funded in the first uh, 45 minutes, but still going strong. Uh, there's a bunch of really amazing other add-ons that come with that uh, that you should go check out while we're doing that. Uh, or if you've already backed it, uh, go to ttrpg.link slash EFCon 2022. Uh, join us this weekend at the first ever uh, Exalted Funeral Online Convention. But we'll be back in five minutes to play a little bit more of the big squirm.
And we are back here on Plus One EXP playing The Big Squirm, a, uh, a hard-boiled uh, detective uh, adventure set for uh, Troika uh, that is live right now over on Kickstarter. You can go to ttrpg.link slash bigsquirmks uh, to go check that out. Uh, and there's also a bunch of cool add-ons uh, on there that are coming out with the adventure that I won't hold Luke responsible for knowing what all of are because I don't believe that Luke <laughs> created all of them. Uh, but there's things like token bags, uh, a GM screen that I'm very much looking forward to seeing uh, what looks like, some other cool stuff on there. So you can also add on other Troika things that you've missed in the past. So if you've ever been looking to get into Troika, it's a great way to uh, to dive in. Uh, you can go check that out, but let's dive back into the game. Um, we I just ate one of these, these things I, while we were walking somewhere, but my character wasn't paying attention to where that was. <laughs> you know, like the fuck it, the galaxy brain meme? <laughs> yeah. You're feeling like you started here, and as as you as it's kind of pumping into your bloodstream, you're like moving down to the level. Um, so for anything like more intellectual, 
take a plus two for now. Um, but you're also much less likely to notice stuff because you're kind of you're in your own internal space right now. Um, you are on another level. You know, you're 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 vibing with the universe, but Excellent. also you don't notice stuff. Every uh, everything feel... is put into me right now. Yeah, exactly. Like the you can see the flow of the tapioca that oh. undergirds reality. Um, Quaaludes, nice, <laughs> very nice. Uh, so yeah, you're having a fucking great time. Meanwhile, everyone else, <laughs> I believe the plan was that you were gonna head back to that kind of circular room where you domed the um, the defense automata and look for the. Oh, stairs Luke! Down. I actually one of the reasons I gave us a break was I did send you a request for the other art folder because I apparently didn't have access to it. Oh, so shit. at some point in the next little bit, you want to click on that. I was like, I oh, bet you there's some know. of this cool art that I could be showing on stream. Let me there go grab is. that other folder and didn't. That's 100 percent why we did the break. I totally forgot to tell you yeah. before we all got up, and so Wait, now everybody's it, hearing about it live. It wasn't for our well being. <laughs> uh, no, it was that. Yeah, that's that also too. I really care about whether we've all no, gone, to all re- gone to the restroom wow. lately. And so wow. It did look okay. like because people in the in the UK were going to melt also too. Yes, but uh, mm. it's it's eighty degrees here. Like that's and it. We have no aircon, <laughs> and all of our houses are made of radiating material. <laughs> all of our houses are made of brick. As somebody Mine's who grew up concrete. in the southern U.S. and who lives in a, in Philadelphia, yeah. now, eighty degrees. I was just like, oh. I feel less bad. Yeah, like that sounds so nice. Like, like oh, what a pleasant day for a walk. Yeah, like what are you talking about? <laughs> it's half past eight here. It should like, it yeah, should be cool. yeah. That's a nice evening weather. It's not a hundred and five. You're fine. Nah. All right. Oh, sweet. So much more art. All right. All right. Now that was yeah. So let's uh, let's dive back in. Yeah, we're going down somewhere. <laughs> Tight. Yeah, so you've headed back into the circle, uh, and you are you can you kind of find the stairs by peeking down some of these lower down ones. So the stairs don't have anything particularly interesting here, and I'm just gonna know. Back of the floor as you can tell. Um on the wrong floor, give me a mo. It's like this kind of grand staircase, like you could get four people abreast down here. Um and as you're kind of going, uh, you can kind of hear this voice kind of um, yeah. Oh, okay. Echoing up from below you as you go down this grand spiral staircase. Uh, I lean over uh, the edge and just whistle a complicated tune. As you kind of whistle, and you're kind of leaning over and having a look, you can see hanging off one of the railings is one of these defensive Thomas who's desperately clinging onto the railings is trying to like uh, hold himself up and not quite doing it uh, uh, um and you can see his like little robot feet are kicking um seems pretty unhappy with the whole sitch um mm, that whole earlier question about their right to be autonomous subjects really prescient now um so, do we save its life? Uh, I mean, earlier they said it wasn't alive. Um, yeah, that's what a bunch of cats said, though. It's not made out of pudding. Right, none of us are made out of pudding. Okay, you were obviously the wrong person to ask this. Um, I'm going to give the little golem dude a hand. So you go down. How many hands do you, uh, have you got in your pack? <laughs> Checking. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, you're going to laugh. <laughs> well, they're not hands. They are the claws of a giant dragon centipede. So it's like tomato, tomato. That counts. But like, no, they're, it's fine. No, I'm just going to give them my hand. So you kind of help them and they kind of finally get themselves and they kind of hit the thing with a big crash. And this big machine kind of stand up and dust itself off. And it's kind of, I am Nomostasus, and I owe you a great debt. Although, and he kind of looks at you. Are you still wearing pet patrol hats? Oh, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he kind of looks. He goes. Now you know the rules. No trying to leave. And he just starts going upstairs. Doesn't seem to care. Right. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. All right, I've seen Time Bandits. I know how this goes. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, okay. See, look at that. Good deed. Huh? Huh? A deed, definitely. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so do you continue down the stairs at that point, or are you in a lurk in the stairs for a bit? Or? Uh, yeah, let's 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 get to the mezzanine. Let's we got we got we got people we got pets to give sentience. Why, why don't you come with us? Oh, I I have my assigned patrols, but thank you. Was your assigned patrol down there? It's up here. Wait a minute. 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 I'm stopping in there. for the for the current one who's up I, there. I, I take one of the sentience pills and I, I give it to the golem. Try this. <laughs> so once again, he looks. So he, okay, he kind of looks at it. Freedom. Did you? Where did you get this? In a dream. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's yeah, right. I mean, you roll those dice. Like, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> roll that he he kind of um, takes it. He eats it, crunches it up with his big stone jaw. Like, ar, ar, ar. He doesn't have lips. He's made of stone. Um, so this powder goes everywhere, but he kind of sits yeah. there. Feel that freedom. You're right. Our entire religious practice of non-violence is ridiculous. We should use lethal methods. I see it now. And he kind of turns, he looks at you. Thank you for my freedom. I will be far more efficient as a security robot now. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, wait, but that's the violence you do to yourself. You have only... No, it's very much the violence I do to others. And <laughs> no. as he starts going up, you can see he's, like, sharpening, like, the, the blunted studs. He's, like, trying to make them sharp, right. like, scraping them on the walls. <clears throat> Classic just behavior. Sorry about that, y'all. I did so We've I learned just... something from this, I think. <laughs> yeah, don't give cops drugs. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> Don't ever give the cops your drugs. They won't appreciate it, and they'll just get worse. Okay, got it. We did it. We did it, team. We can end the session now. <laughs> um, solved crimes. <laughs> we, well, well um, yeah, we continue on and block that knowledge from our minds. Yeah, so continuing down, you end up, you're coming down, you're stepping down into this um, room filled with huge sweeping arches. But the main thing you notice is there's this golden crystal almost that's kind of just floating around and it's beaming out this kind of warm radiant light um and it's just kind of slowly floating about it doesn't seem to notice you and like its light falls upon all these statues and busts each of which has a little price tag in like where normally you'd have the sculptor's name and the name of the art piece instead it just has a price that how much they paid for it uh and it's kind of going around and there's like little mirrors that kind of reflect more hidden artworks these big banners kind of flapping down with the prodromous crest atop it um and lots of stairs and lots of little like hallways and such um sorry are yeah, you are just... you telling me these filthy capitalist dogs replace the the artist's name with its monetary exchange rate yeah do any of them are any of them like hexagonal with like a weird bored looking like ape in them is that what we're looking at yeah they're all of them are, are, are <laughs> bored apes yeah every single one <laughs> um, also. you can oh, also no. see kind of tucked in a corner is a member of staff who appears to be asleep whilst this like big crystal thing just kind of floats around and illuminates everything i walk up to the member of staff who is asleep and i just poke him really hard in the forehead what the oh, fuck? Oh, uh, sorry, yes, I need to sign... Wait, no, you... He kind of looks at you. You're new? How are you Yeah, new? I'm, uh... Transfer, I'm LA I'm office. Hat. I'm I'm taking over your shift. You've got the oh. off. Oh! Um, why did you join me up, then? Because you can go home, mate. Just go and have an Nobody afternoon. Nobody can go home. No, the you can. The robot stop you us. The you machines, can. they stop us. Now, there's you a very nice home. robot actually patrolling right where we just came from. He'll see to you. Yeah. Oh! Sound. All right. Well, why didn't you take the opportunity to leave? And trapped in here for weeks. Because it's not me that's got the afternoon off. It's are you like? Oh, you know what? I'm not looking gift horse in the mouth. Right, yeah. You're right. All right. Nice one. He kind of hands you the book that he was like, kind of sleeping on, and he's like, "Right, peace out." You guys take this hat off. Stay sharp. Scurries up the stairs like yes. I think we just got that guy killed. We didn't get him killed. <laughs> <laughs> we maybe gave him we the didn't... opportunity to may end up. With him inviting his own death, he right? An investment in death. 
look at me. Looking. I'm wearing purple robes, right? Right. I don't look like I work here. What's right. he going to trust in me? Right. Okay. I feel like we've really passed the buck on this whole culpability thing. I've got enough times. Back, mate. Why is he trusting me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just can't argue with this kind of logic. Uh, so we're in the statue room. Do any of these statues look worm-like or worm orthogonal? Uh, none. None of them appear to be worm-related. Um, there's definitely a couple of the banners where they've kind of got the label, and it not just the price. It also mentions the name of any animals that have been um, rendered extinct in the creation of the banners as well. It's like a little kicker on some of them. Wow! Uh, fuck these um, people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When we were so when we were like chatting with the guy the guy who was guarding this, did the crystal floating around seem to respond to sound in any way? Nah, it's just kind of floating around. It seems like it kind of it knows enough to avoid walls and stuff. Apart from that, it's almost like a screensaver uh thing where it just bounces around off the edges. It's like a Roomba. Yeah, it's like a Roomba, but like a that creates light and just kind of bobs around looking pretty chill. I was going to say Illumba for Illuminate. So, yeah, no, that's to good. Joke. Yeah, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't. don't. That's, that's do not a, We don't. Um, there is like a huge amount of uh, rooms down here, but these ones, unlike some of the others, they look like they're actually labeled. Uh, this kind of like a maze of passages. Uh, so from here, you can see there's uh, a trophy room, uh, an auditorium, there's the Museum of Dubious Provenance. Swimming pool, uh, golden barge dock, a drawing room, a silver gondola dock, uh, a ballroom, a dining room, and a drug room. I'm sorry, um, uh, copy. Uh, can I get copy on drug room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you can go. You can go scout out the drug room. Um, I like the way well, you left that one till the end. <clears throat> yeah, Clockwise, mate. Well, really well okay. On that. Is there anything that's like close to incriminating evidence room? Um, Drawing yeah, room. <laughs> okay, damn, we got a lot of choices here. <laughs> does um, does Clark yeah. know what it's been about? Uh, Carl, Carl fucked off because he felt sheepish because he responded to the. Oh, he did, didn't he? Damn so it. he pissed I'm off. Like, he was like, well, you just said sheepish again. We've talked about this. <laughs> they can't hear. The pets aren't here. It's fine. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how moral fortitude works. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fine if no one hears you. I see. Yeah, if an <laughs> asshole falls in the woods, does it like what? Motherfucker. Look, the British have operated that way for centuries. There's no reason Ooh. to change. That. Wow, you couldn't Ooh. have said anything more damning. Like, wow. <laughs> There's nothing more damning than being British. Yeah, the British have is how I start insults. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Uh, one of us are denying it either. Chat, which We're of these rooms should we go into? Someone save us. Yeah, uh, chat, we really need some, <laughs> some help here. We're we go ahead and say those rooms children. out loud again. Uh, so we've got an auditorium, the Museum of Dubious Provenance, a swimming pool, golden barge dock, drawing room, silver gondola dock, uh, dining hall, and drug room. Okay, that's eight eight options. Uh, so for also, got... none of them are the menagerie. No. Oh, you're clever. You I say, happen. drug room, sharpen up. Yeah, Herman Crab's here. Yeah. Everybody seems to be on team drug room. I got to say, as usual, just seems to be the correct one. Drug room, <laughs> then drug swimming. Room, then swimming, as you do. Yeah. yeah. That yeah, worked out wait 30 hard. minutes after it for like, like <laughs> so you don't get a stitch. Yeah, so we don't yeah. get a cramp from all that heroin. <laughs> oh, I can't parachute with MDMA, then I'll get a stitch from <laughs> yeah, oh, that yeah. horse has really got my ankle sore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it sounds like it's drug room. Which is yeah, <laughs> drug room. Let's go. Let's, let's uh, go. it's it's trek a drug. So I assume it's like something really benign, like a notepad. Like, oh, yeah. so you kind of it's 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 not a direct passage it's like a weird little lip. It's, almost, it's not a maze but it curves and bends and has right angles necessarily but you end up 
quite a close room. Like everything has to be on a very grand scale. This one, it almost feels like a cigar room uh, with like the big, thick, heavy silk drapes everywhere. There's no windows, um, and there's big, heavy like bookcases full of very serious looking like philosophy books and like artistic books um but a lot of them also spread out everywhere there's loads of pencils paints musical instruments um there's lots of sets of scales and conversion charts kind of tacked up on the walls for like weights measurements fluid ounces shit like that uh and in the center of the room is an empty pedestal pedestal that's all fucked up and scratched at the top there's nothing on it apart from these like quite deep scratches um there's also two exits i believe hang on is that right wait what kind of druggies are these all there's is books in here this is lame there's two exits uh one that says menagerie and one that says gallery hey all right um okay yeah Um, (laughs) in my enhanced state i'm gonna pick up one of these books of philosophy and just start reading it Oh yes, this, this honestly, this guy—it's so trite. You just download complete, read it all in one, and you know you—you—you've far surpassed their uh, petty thinkings. You know, it's basic metaphysical bothered. drivel. Yeah, it's <laughs> nonsense. You, know? you can see straight through their sophistry. Bit of play today. I always love seeing through sophistry. I'm ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> um. So is uh, you said you were gonna head to the mansion next? Yes. Uh, I'm gonna lick that bowl with the scratches. Just gonna get a quick lick. It's like cat. Uh, and I would be familiar. Yeah, okay. So um, we're, we're actually we're carrying all the drugs that came from this room. Yeah, likely. Cool. Um. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. If I was a drug lord, I look for the most boring looking book on the shelf. Uh, I mean, you're in an ascended brain state because you took one with the with the uh, automata. So for you, these all look fascinating. You know, you could spend hours. Yeah, the least... least fascinating. Okay. <laughs> um, you start looking through some of the more boring ones. It seems like they're just actual books, man. Damn it! Not even a not even a hollowed out Bible among you. Like nothing. 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 Wow. Wow. There are, these there are three, hollowed so out ways. Religious, three hollowed out religious texts, but they just have other books inside of those hollows. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Russian nesting doll of, of lame education material. Oh my God. These poor children. Um, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's head on to the menagerie. Um, but I, I'd like to take any books they have on um, the, related to the manufacture of these sentience drugs, if, if anything pops yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, you can take the Nootropics manual, absolutely. Fine. Oh, hell yeah, Nootropics manual, <laughs> just my guy, expanding his library. <laughs> so, uh, moving through into the next room, you can hear the sound of uh, feet on, kind of boots on stone. Uh, and you kind of come around and you start off and again it's kind of got like a walkway around the top of this much bigger room and you can see there's what at first they look like cages but then you realize they're more kind of like big glass boxes and inside each of them is an entirely different scene um in one of them you can see this kind of what kind of looks like some sort of lion that's made of fire and lightning and it appears to be trying to eat something coming off of a star and it's like floating in space uh in another one there's a pack of these things that kind of look like gibbons and then like knuckle walking and then one of them sees something like looks a bit tasty it fucking vomits its own stomach out to like catch it like a frog with its tongue and each one of these different boxes has an entirely different scene going on inside between them you can see um there's eight members of staff and they have big butterfly nets uh, and whistles, and they're kind of marching in like a kind of patrol pattern through this room. Greetings, staff. We we are we are here to announce the staff appreciation banquet to meet in the mezzanine. Attendance is mandatory. Uh, what? Why has he got a pep pe- patrol hat on? They point at you as a hunter. We're short staffed. Don't no, pay him any mind. Probably all the member of staff. Oh, you did. You're right. You did take it off. My bad. They kind of look at you. Listen, you know there's pets about, and they're going to try and get in here. Someone needs to guard this because 
have you seen this one? And they point at one, and it's this like horrible, like long necked freak. It's kind of got this like brownish thing with like yellow line shots through it, and it's got like a really long neck. And it's got weird little pom poms. Yeah. yeah, why do you think we're here in equal number? Please leave. Look at it. It's got hot. Look at it. Have you seen its tongue? Look at me. This thing shoots out like long black tongue and like right, wraps it around a branch and shuck, rips <laughs> off all of the leaves. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah, look at me. I've got ripped jeans on. I'm a giant bat creature with a smile and a smooth attitude. Like, I'm ready, okay? You go get your damn lunch. They're going to... Look, there needs to be more of you than there are here. There are. Oh, you just can't see the rest of us. Oh, we do have t Invisible Timmy. He's not on this. He's Come on, he's not on payroll. Who are you? Come on. <laughs> wow. Oh, 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 I see. Oh, I see. I, I, what are you talking about? Like, I've still got my pet patrol. Like, right? Oh, shit, it's backwards. Fuck. <laughs> uh, we can't tell you who we are. That's above your pay grade. I, I can only tell you what we're supposed oh, to do. Oh, right. Here us. we go. Here come the managerial staff to come down here and stomp. Do I need to get my person. clipboard out? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you, you, I. I dare you to get your clipboard out. Get your fucking clipboard out. Get it out. I start rooting in my bag. Do you really yeah. want me to get this clipboard out? Yeah, you want it? You want it? Because you know what happens when this comes out. I don't even got a shirt. I'll get out a pocket protector. All right, look. It was only once that we talked about mm -hmm. it. And we decided not to. We took a vote. We decided not to. So there's no need for this. Just, let's be cool. We were being cool. All right. That is the correct answer. Here is a golden watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's called a bonus. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We call that quiz management style. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you broke them off with a gold watch and they're pretty fucking happy. Um, yeah. Oh, now I've only be. got six left. Ooh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> six will get out of tail for you, Carl. Um, who's um, got the nicest looking ears among them? Uh, there's, there's a couple <laughs> whose ears are bereft of, of decorations. All right, sweet. Here's a pair of golden earrings for you and you, darling. There you go. <laughs> They're dead happy. Um, okay. Thank God these things kept stabbing me. I don't really have a lot of pockets. <laughs> yeah, they, they kind of troop out quite happily heading over towards uh, uh, the Leave your nets. Oh. Down to twenty four pairs. How are we of supposed to do this if we don't have the nets? Yeah, we need. You're them. right. You're Come right. On. They drop. They drop the big butterfly nets for you. Day one. Yep. All right. Are they are they gone? Have they fucked off proper? <laughs> are we are we Gucci? Can we? <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they he he says out loud there, before they, they even leave the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we Gucci? <laughs> is this is this chill? <laughs> Did we do it? Thank God. I yanked the string that I had attached to all of my golden watches and earrings to pull it back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I've been using that same pair for years. <laughs> so, um, what, what, what are these animals like? So there's loads of them. So to give calm? you a random... Do they seem hungry? They are watching you very closely. Like oh, the no. uh, some of those like inverting... Because they've got little labels. Cause of, well, some of them do. The inverting gibbons are watching you very closely and they're like pouring at this kind of glass thing and vomiting out their stomachs against like the walls and then retracting them. The weird, horrible, long-necked thing with its little pom-poms kind of watching you very closely. Um... And we're supposed to give the pills to these things. That's what you've been asked to do. Mm. There's okay. one where it's like you're looking in, it's like an infinite sea of blood, and these things, these horrible like needle legs, like running around on the scabby bits. You know, these are all pretty gnarly. These animals. Maybe we don't give the pills to that one. Is there, is there is, like a is, feeding is, yeah. tube or apparatus or? So you have a little crown. Um, there is like this pair of what appear to be gloves made of glass that are like flexible. It looks like it's the same material that's like the box that's containing these. But as you can see from when you're like looking into the box, you can see it extending out infinitely. It's almost like these are like miniature portals or something, like rather than just mm. containers. 
Um, mm-hmm. So when you're like looking in, you can just see like into this and into other reality almost. Ooh, is there a master logbook of all entrance into these things? Like, is there a, some kind of like record of ins and outs? Uh, there is a limited one where it's I'd like that to visit because it seems like these reach ecosystems, so they all kind of feed in their own ecosystems here. Okay, no uh, records of worms. Feeding. No records of worms being kept here. No, although there was, um, there is one from a month and two weeks ago, where somebody entered one of them to look for worms. Well, they sent the staff in to look for some pretender to look for some scarf worms, and they never came back. Which um, one did they go in? Uh, the one with the inverting gibbons. Shall we feed the a pill to the inverting gibbons? Because yeah. A, we can see what happens when we do it, and B, we could ask them about worms. Yeah, plus, if I had to be ever give my pity and sympathy to a creature, it's something that has to vomit out its stomach to eat. Yeah, but also, yeah. right now, it doesn't know it has to vomit its own stomach out to eat, and we are going to make it so this thing has to know it's vomiting its own stomach out to eat. Oh, uh, well, well, we, oh, we can... We can... I was going to say kill it afterwards. That's a bit cold. <laughs> we um, can. That's a true statement. I'm going to go ahead yeah. and make a copy of this uh, this list of things. I just go ahead and rip those pages out. <laughs> yeah, we are. Come Kevin on. Kevin. <laughs> just take the book then. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> this is more efficient. Books are heavy. That's, that's, that's not making a copy. That's not what making a copy is. No, that's not what making a copy is. Really? I've got a copy of the, this thing in my hand. So that is the thing. <laughs> okay, look, Ghost in the Shell, right? It's very simple. Okay. No. I'm, All right. I'm going to feed right. a pill to one of the Gibbons. Yeah, yeah feed a pill to the Gibbons like, while we argue about right. original souls. You put on the thing, you like feed the pill into the into the uh, the cage or the, 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 the portal. Uh, so as soon as your hand comes through... <laughs> Stomach hits your hand, and it's like weirdly being caressed by a steak that's warm. It's like oh. it slides back off your hand. Um, God, kind of, you're such a charmer. From the gibbon, and it kind of sits there, and then you kind of see sentience bloom in its eyes. What have you done to me? This is fucking awful. <laughs> no, no, it, it gets rad once you get a job. No. Uh. <laughs> no. Oh. Like no, but the you boy. Give yourself a name now. Well, uh, I'm Paul Gibbon. <laughs> What's Paul Gibbon? Paul Gibbon. Wow. Is Paul Gibbon is part of the House of Congress? Like what? Is... <laughs> what if you? What did you give me? We gave you autonomy. We thought you'd be more jazzed about it. Paul, I can I can try to fix it in a minute. We just got a couple questions. <laughs> I mean, I guess I feel like I owe you intuitively, but this seems like a pretty bum deal for me. I'm not. I can, I can try all the other givens are like minute. backing up, scared. Like, yeah. If it makes you feel any better, none of us got a choice in the matter either. Yeah, I mean, that's something. Yeah, Sark was really clear about this. It's not a it's not a good deal. Um, one, uh, uh. Some people wearing stuff like this came through a couple of months ago. Did you see that? Oh yeah, no, we um we ate them. Uh, <laughs> how how do they taste? Pretty good. I mean, it's different. You know, usually I'm eating you know um, lizards and like squirrels and birds, but um, you're a lot bigger, a meatier, and it's nice. I like it. It's um. I wouldn't say I've got a taste for it because we had to tear them up with our claws, and he shows you his claws, um, before we could digest them with our... Oh, God. <laughs> no, why did you lead him here? Oh, no. No, no, no. Woo-hoo, hello. You, Hi, look you at the didn't birdie. know what you were doing. It's fine. It's fine. You know. oh, yeah. That's awful, isn't it? When, yeah. they, when they came in here, uh, were they looking for and did they successfully retrieve any worms? They had a look in, he kind of gestures behind them, and there's some like trees and caves. And, you know, they had a look in there before we jumped them, but they didn't seem very happy before we, you know, ambushed them and eviscerated them and ate them. But did any of them escape with the worms? No, there's no no worms here, pal. Apart from no, sur- ones. no survivors, no worms. Got it. Okay. Um, no survivors, no worms is the sequel to this. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. No gods, no masters. 
Nice yeah, don't let <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, did they did they leave anything behind that you couldn't digest? Oh yeah, hang on. Um, he kind of goes around and he starts rooting around in their shit pile, like literal pile of feces. And he starts rooting around. Oh right, what we got? He kind of throws a little badge behind him. Uh, he throws like a knife. Um, <laughs> We're an anarcho syndicalist commune. <laughs> He finds um, some like masks, uh, a set of goggles. Um, that's about it. Everything else went down pretty smooth. Um, okay. Um, do... They seemed pretty concerned. I mean, we over. I can still remember from before I was cursed with sentience. Um, and it's called there being was, like, born. Another... Oh, we can't that's a nice way. It since smoother rolls off the tongue. Mm. Since my birth, five minutes ago or so, um, I still remember prior to that. And um, there was like this very angry uh, voice. This lady was like, "You better find me some worms." Uh, that's what she said. Uh, what are these worms? Are they valuable? Are they tasty? What's the? I don't know about taste, but they are valuable in a certain sense. Or they remove value, so chew on that one for a while with your new brain. So you've developed the concept of like value and currency as well. This is fascinating. Well, yeah. I think... And the same words that we already know as well. That's mad. Well, it's all... Uh, the, uh, whatever it was you gave me, it seems to bear the uh, marks of its creator, as it were. Um, and oh, a right. little bit of them has been passed Got along. It. It's probably why... Yeah, I mean, it's also definitely modified my... Uh, points that he's through because like, i wasn't able to make sounds like this before you know um and you're english now yeah well it happens you know you play the hand you dealt don't you <laughs> <laughs> wow do you, right. do you want to stay like this i mean <sighs> cox gun <laughs> <laughs> it, it's one of those tricky ones isn't it because it's like if I'd remember being like this, I'd miss it. But equally, I miss, you know, there is like a certain return to nature vibe that I quite appreciate, sort of return to monk, if you will. But obviously, <laughs> I'm already a monk, so it's difficult. It's difficult. Right, but I just um, need you to make a choice. I thought you were an ape. Well. Okay, let's go exactly, on the stage. Really. Like, context clues. Um, I reckon I'll stay right, right. for now. Could I have some more? Because if... I think I'll get lonely. Here's the thing, right? We're working with fermenting revolution. Right. Would you like <laughs> to foment? At, right. Free in everyone. Oh, am I? A, what do you mean free in? I mean, it, it should be like liberating me from ignorance, but the ignorance is quite nice, truth to be told. So. so right. So you're you're not like this is just like you're not actually in a cage, are you? Shit. Well, we're <clears> all <throat> in a cage. Mm. We've got some mates who are in, who are being kept captive, right? The cats. What's, are they edible? Not all I things mean, yeah, are edible. Yes, like, that's not the but point. they, you know, they've had they've got the the speaking pills. Oh, well, all right. I mean, so, yeah. Can, yeah. They want to they want us out of where they're being held, but they're very small. I mean, perhaps finding a cause to dedicate myself to might alleviate the meaninglessness of consciousness. So I, I could, I could go for oh, that. Okay, that, yeah. ah, that sounds all right. zealotry. Yes. <laughs> um, hey, could you? Yeah, give us some more. I'll, I'll get, I'll get the rest of the band involved, and we can, um, we can have a go. You hop over here. Help us get the cats free. I won't lie, you're kind of a disembodied voice at the moment, or a set of disembodied voices. I can't really see you. Oh, no, just... yeah, that's because you're trapped in a portal cube. Sorry about that. Mm. Um, oh, nightmare. So I am trapped. Oh, so it is, it's like a shared liberation. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, because without without world revolution, there is only failed revolution, so... That sounds doable, yeah? Let's, I am going to need a promise from you. What's that? Don't eat anyone while you're over here. It's frowned upon generally. Mm. I can I can certainly try. Um, it's okay. Um, Once you oh, try a hot dog for the first time, you'll never go back. Oh, all right. Yeah, let's, let's do that then. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, like, can I like reach a hand down into the portal box and just like give our our our, our friend a hand out of the portal universe? Yeah, and he kind of 
grit all, all of the gibbons very delightfully. They are kind of huddling. Oh, like a barrel of monkeys. Like, like a barrel of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> come out and okay. Yeah, they all start, yeah. He starts handing out the tropics and they all start swallowing them down. One by one, they all begin to grapple with, you know, the nightmare oh, of content. Shit, yeah. There's all my 12 hours of existential conversations about coming into yeah. being that happen. Yeah, I mean, Paul, Paul, Paul paint, forms... A the full horror of sentience. Yeah, I mean, Paul naturally forms a leader, so I only have to do one voice per type of creature. Um, <laughs> that's that's good, yeah. The other yeah. Ones, are the other ones named by Paul, or do they name themselves? Paul and gives are... them the chance to name themselves. Yeah, yeah Matthew. George, 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 Ringo. Yeah. Yeah. The fifth one. I like, I like yeah. how one went Beatles and one went Gospels. That was an excellent. <laughs> yeah, and like, if, yeah, yeah, and me going Gospels here truly was like not. That's that's uncharacteristic. I, I think these pills are getting to me. Um, okay, well, now that we've freed slash condemned these people, <laughs> the others all look a bit fucky. I don't know if I want to. They're kind of looking at the other ones. Just right. Try... They're like, well, I mean, it seems unfair to, I mean, if you consider consciousness a gift, it seems unfair to limit it to only some. But equally, he points at one of them, and this one is just a cave that's very, very dimly lit by flickering firelight. And there's these big kind of like stone raptor things that just hunch around the firelight, not moving. Oh, they seem oh. pretty concerning, personally. Yeah. Yeah, like no, the, the problem is is that sentience also... We haven't talked about evil yet. And I, do I have a copy of Dostoevsky? Does anyone... It's <laughs> <laughs> um, hollowed out. I step okay, back okay, into the drug room. Yeah, yeah two-second version, two-second version. If there is evil, then it is already presupposed on our capacity to do good, and therefore we cannot limit their capacity for evil by their capacity to do good. So it's a real crapshoot is what I'm saying. I'm and so there are already raptors... Movie. So right. Like, they're kind of they're kind of wander around. Yeah, your stomach um, thing is well, so, we got a limited way. supply of these pills. Because if so, then it might make sense for us to I mean if we're like, looking to escape, this one seems he seems pretty good. And this is like the, the lion with like its burning mane of plasma that's eating bits of star. He seems like a pretty tough customer. Uh, we live on a star is the thing. Or adjacent to one. Mm. Oh, my hand's oh. already halfway to that lion's cage. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeet. I mean, are there any? It just seems cruel. Maybe we come back later for him. Yeah, maybe we see about helping the cats get out, and then if we need backup, we can come back. Yeah, we can form like a truth and reconciliation committee. Like, <laughs> it'll be great. Yeah, well, it'll be right. It'll be. Um, won't the uh, won't the cats really feel quite positive if we actually choose to bring the cat out first? Like, in, I mean, in retrospect, starting of, with other cats, scale of a thing? starry and cat because it looks quite all right from here. But what if it's the size of like a planet and we pull it through into this room? Uh, and maybe it'll have like no brain the size of a planet too, and it can think its way out quicker. Yeah, we'd be dead. In a way, we're really? not all dead. It is like I mean, if we step away going just like you planned, Luke. Yeah, like a, yeah not a this, small is exactly, this is intended behavior. <laughs> well, look, game design is is not directorship. All right, we've broken it, and now it cannot be mended again. <laughs> all right, uh, here we go. I mean, we do have so, these big. We have to do these big nets if anything goes wrong. Yeah, big nets are always the thing that have solved problems. <laughs> Worked out really well in Jurassic Park. If if comically oversized nets weren't the solution to problems, they wouldn't have endured in popular literature as much as they have. It's true. Valid. Wow. All right. Yeah. Can't argue with that. Let's go. See so you releasing the cat. <laughs> I just put my yeah. I put my hand. I I, I said that as I stuck my hand even further I, in. Yeah. So you like offer. So like the lion kind of like like burning through the sky, fucking comes down and like sweeps the pill out of your hand, and then it stops fucking dead. And there's like a low rumble that emerges from within it. Who am I? 
What am I? What's that which serves the on? public good. Sorry, can I just recite the protocols for RoboCop? <laughs> <laughs> Serve the public trust. I wish you the would. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. I just yeah. So I, I leave out Directive Four, but like. Yep. <laughs> yeah, serve this the public seems... trust, protect the innocent, um, uphold the uphold the just. Let's not say the law. No, let's not. This seems like a viable way to live. This kind of yes. Thing. Who are you? Are you within me? Am I within you? Yes. In a way, we're all within each other. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, yeah, that's a solid yes. Do not elaborate. Explaining is losing. This seems like an excellent time <laughs> this... for me to smoke the golem. Parchment. That was my next move. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Inspired. So you're going right. to poke up whilst they're talking to the... Yeah, I'm, I'm, Everybody I'm on stream, we're going to warn you right now, this is where things are going to get a little weird. They know they've been pretty boilerplate till now. <laughs> Hard boilerplate. Um, yeah. Ooh. <clears throat> uh, but we are about to smoke the golem scroll. Repeat. Clear the runaway. <laughs> the drugs have activated. So you fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, Luke. Um, we, so thank God you're a writer. Is, is, is trying to like understand the idea of like this kind of continuum of being. Meanwhile, um, Harley, you, you toke up on some Golem Scroll and you feel this like, at first it's very harsh in your lungs, and then you feel this like kind of radiating sense of tranquility and peace. And you feel some of your hatred towards wizards. It kind of softens and it becomes more gentle and you feel not just an inner peace but a peace that you want to share and project outwards um you feel maybe pacifism is the right choice uh, this is really chill we, yeah. we lost Ooh. we lost Sean, I think, oh, due to the yeah, scroll uh, smoking. I just wish this was a smaller screen. Uh, but we can keep on describing what this high is like. for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> keep keep right. describing this golem scroll smoke sesh. <laughs> I think I've been wrong about wizards. Okay, solid takeaway. <laughs> like, oh, you should not be wrong about wizards. They sound awful. Yeah, but they don't deserve to die for it. You could simply eviscerate them, as I have done to my mm. enemies a thousand times. Why, why have you got enemies, man? Why can't we all just get along? Yeah, we just talked about this. Protect the innocent. Uphold the just. Like, we do. Jesus, come on. I am speaking to how I lived before. As oh. a free roaming lion, defending my territory of stars to consume. The free roaming lion. Is that covered under NAFTA? Yes. <laughs> Is that... <laughs> Sorry. There, I'm the <laughs> oldest person in the world now. You're welcome. <laughs> Good fucking God. <laughs> Sorry. We spoke the golem scroll. Nothing nothing matters now. <laughs> There's no rules. There's no up. Up is down. The lion's still kind of looking around like, where are you? Are you truly within me, or is this a ruse? Because there are many of you. You are a multitude. No, we are We are linked across the stars that you once consumed. So uh, if you'd like to join us on the other side, you will know terror and joy untold. I say flatly. <laughs> yeah, the, the lion kind of rips through the glass. Um, it gives off this kind of, like, as it kind of comes through into your, like, realm, it seems like the, the burning nature of it dulls a little bit. It's less incandescent and more just kind of, like, low embers. I am surrounded, not by a vacuum, but by an atmosphere. And he kind of pads around. This thing's big. It, like, comes up to, like, kind of chest height. And it's kind of panning around and have a look a bit, look, look around. Hey, hey Kobe. It is They've uh, released the, the Plasma Lane Lion and uh, Chris's character smoked a golem scroll and now feels at peace with the world. Mm, I don't hate wizards anymore. Well. <laughs> I mean, I still have some fundamental disagreements about the yeah, you're grappling, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're grappling, right? It, it de you know, decolonizing the soul is a matter of decolonizing the mind. It takes time, you know. Yeah. 
but you know, step one, maybe I'll read some Graber. Like, yeah, yeah, all right, cool. So we've got a line. We've got some 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 stomach gibbons. I think we're pretty set. Um, still no worm evidence. Kind of failing at our primary gig here. Look, if we can't get out of here, it doesn't matter either way. So that's fair. Um, though I suppose we could have just used one of these portal boxes. Are we still hey, can? Hey, Space Lion, and you've got to watch Cowboy Bebop. Now that I've said that. Um, space line. I gotta ask you something. Can you just like rip holes in space time, or is how how does that how does that track? I was able to see the disruption in the vacuum of space. How how big are you? He, he comes Not up to. to you. He's, he's, he's in. He's in, He's like ripped through. He's in oh, your realm now. And he's cool. he comes up to chest height. He's a big old big old space lion. Yeah. All right. And how do you feel about riders? How do you feel about Tommy Robes? Oh, if they're acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what about riders? Because like we could all hop on you and 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 get out of this place and then start start the revolution for peace and justice. Just casual. Very well. Now why <laughs> am I here? What are we doing? Why are there these gibbons around me? The Gibbons are Paul, you know, speaking for the group for convenience sake. Yeah, yeah. He well, um, we are also recently uh, gifted with a you know sentience or cursed, depending on your opinion. The lion seems like he's taken a lot more in his stride. Um, yeah, they're all kind of looking to you for guidance here. Like, what's what's the next step? So we're gonna go and hook up with our mate Fishbone. They all nod. But all in unison. And then we're going to lead a revolution. And then we'll send you home if you want. I mean, okay. Yeah. And, and everybody keep a lookout for anything incriminating to do with worms. Just <laughs> eyeballs up. All right. <laughs> That's the reason we're here. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Look, more assume... more lion and gibbon eyes are better than one. All right, like you're not it's... wrong. <laughs> yeah, we're detectives. You trace back your same route to get back to uh, back to Fishbone and Co. Uh, yeah, we go a totally different way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just tell yeah, us, about some, tell us about some of the cool stuff we walk past. As you're coming uh, up those stairs again, there's a figure. Up and above you, um, so they are kind of they're kind of weird looking. Um, they've got not like let us. Let me get up my. Yeah, I'm about to say, consider who you're talking <laughs> to. What do you mean? <laughs> By whose standards? Yeah, well, most standards. Uh, those of you uh, who who are a bit more uh, experienced across the spheres, you recognize immediately this is an ogre, but not like most ogres you've seen. Um, I'm trying to find my visual reference for him. Where's he? Oh, there he is. He's got like big ears, a kind of long snout, a bunch of teeth. He's wearing like a little silk scarf, like a coat. And he kind of sees you coming up. Ah, like, oh, fellow investigators. Very good. Oh! <laughs> I panicked. Someone help me. <laughs> are, you, are you a wizard? No, I am oh, simply okay. an ogre. Wizards can be ogres. Why is everyone selling their stuff short in this place? Is it like it's like a self confidence ray that just saps it out of everyone? I've never known one of my kind to be a wizard. And he kind of shakes his head and his big floppy ears kind of flop back and forth. Just, Tell me what you've discovered and perhaps we can organize some sort of deal. You first. No. Okay. Uh, that is the extent of what we have discovered. So that's the joke's mm -hmm. on you. He kind of made some friends. Now, perhaps instead we could work together. And if you are so uh, behind on discovering the situation as it stands at hand, well, we've both clearly learned something to end up. He kind of takes his claws here. Now, let us uh, perhaps work together to solve the mystery here. What? What's your name? What are you working for? 
I'm Bug. Bug. My name is Bug. Bug. I personally currently represent the bank. 10,082 steps. Ah. Uh, of the Shaolin Temple. No, oh. I think this is a, t a tool album that was never released. <laughs> oh, way better. Yeah. You may know them as 1082. Most do not give them their full title. Yeah. What I do kind of want to ask and find quite strange here. A lot of your boys have come to this here house. I work alone. Trust oh. me on that fact. I recognize that, but... To work with us? I'm willing to bend the rules for such well-acquainted people. He gestures at the fucking plasma line and 12 <laughs> gibbons kind of dancing around <laughs> behind you on the stairs. <laughs> You've clearly got something going for you. Yeah, no, um, the power of friendship. Delightful, I'm sure. You will be. He just raises one of his weird, craggy eyebrows at that. I hate. Uh, 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 charmingly threatening. That's my motto. Um. Well, we we've we're got these. We're gonna go and we're gonna find the stuff after this uh, with these guys. That's uh, gonna be great. Uh, uh, and I sneeze and I cast web. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's roll. Let's see if we get an oops. <laughs> End of engine now, everyone turns to pig. Let's go. I uh, sneeze and I cast web. You no wonder our parents can't understand us. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me look at my character sheet again. Hold on. Um, yeah, I got it. Um, so, um, what this looks like is like I've got a very nicely piped jacket that's got this kind of reddish, orangish color. Uh, mm -hmm. And it seems to almost undulate. Uh, and then the same color of thick, viscous pudding uh, just shoots out of my nose, uh, <laughs> covering this dude. Right, okay. God, you should have to pay for something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so he, like, despite his, like, significant, like, he's like a tall, wide dude. Despite that, he moves lightning quick and he kind of kicks back and up. And from his coat, he pulls out what looks to be a cut-off fusel. Like, it's like someone's taken a fusel and cut it off, and it's got, like, many different barrels sticking out. Uh, and he's going to give that a fucking squeeze. And it blasts out not one, but, like, a whole scattergun, like, pew, at you. Um, so let's see if he's actually... He's a gun wizard. Yeah, it's a uh, damn gun wizard. Christian Bale is here, and he's an yeah, ogre. So... He's Fire, this isn't the answer, guys. <laughs> As the fucking lasers are like whizzing over your head. So, um, because he's not like shooting at one of you, he's like shooting a cone. Uh everyone needs to somehow he'd like dodge or some shit like that. Uh, I have the number to beat here. Um that'd be that. Yeah, so that's the number to beat. Um you mm. are able to throw a gibbon in front of it if you're willing to sacrifice some of your fellows for a reroll wow. if you fail. Uh, but obviously, the, the Gibbons, Gibbons see it. are sentient and self aware, so really that's their decision, not ours. Yeah. Okay, it's, if you want the reroll, you can take cover behind Gibbons and let them take. Uh, can, I, can I, classic superhero, try to move my pudding extrusion into the oncoming blast of a million lasers and have them face <laughs> off against each other instead of dodging? Just for me, not for anybody else. Screw everybody else. Fuck those guys. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, recast web. Recast. Well, not recast. Like half the stamina cost and cast web again, uh, and that that will definitely work for you if you can pull that off. So that might be. Wait a minute. You. you said these were lasers. It was like a fusel. I always mentioned it was a laser gun. Yeah. yeah. Well, you said lasers, so I'm gonna use my hunky bod shower curtain. <laughs> Which um, does. Well, you know, it's like laminate armor, you know. It's like obviously wouldn't stop a bullet, but it's it's glossy, so you know, it'll reflect laser light. It, it's, it's Okay, your shower simple. curtain is destroyed, but you're free of of, of lasers. <laughs> no, I didn't free. know. I would have never done that. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a collectible. <laughs> um, I'm straight up. I'm, trying to to talk. I'm just like nice. Shit, I I get an eight. Chill out. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to defend myself. 
Um, all right. Well, I guess we'll. I'll, I'll t- do you want to test your luck then to see if the lasers yes. go around you? Um, yes, do. So eight down. No, I rolled an eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Right, fusel Luke, I'm oh, yeah, never going to forgive you for this on my uh, on my luck check. So, uh, so oh. that's enough. <laughs> that's uh, Chris. How much stamina did Harley have? I've got sixteen stamina. Well, you're on nothing now because I'm on six and a fusel, which is eighteen. Um, <laughs> so we'll check how death works in Troika again in a second. Uh, Sean, you also <laughs> failed to dodge out of the way, correct? I did. Yes, that's also right. Uh, you take a. Relatively pitiful four points of damage uh, as only a single one, whereas your peace loving ex wizard hunter takes a chest full of lasers. What are you all doing immediately whilst Harley hits the deck uh, and begins to gently roll down the stairs, only to be caught by a gibbon since you have them there? Um, oh, I should probably actually use the initiative track, shouldn't I? Mm-hmm. If, this, like... if you hit zero during initiative, um, the next time the end of round token comes out, you die. And if you hit zero out of initiative, everyone Start has one round. opportunity to heal you, or you die. Okay. Die, just FYI. Next turn. Matt, you're up first. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, I take my earrings. I do not. That is ridiculous. No, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to... So how far away is he? Uh, Probably about like 25 foot. Uh, and there's like this weird congealing, like webby shit between, or does that automatically retract, Tony? It smells delicious. It, it smells like, good. It's like <laughs> sweet. It's, it's like sweet bacon and eggs. Yeah, yeah but is it in the way? Somewhat. Yeah, the floor is all sticky with pudding. <laughs> Roll okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, all right. Well then, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a fucking monstrous rampage here, and I'm just gonna let the bat out, and I'm just gonna charge through it, claws and all, like dive bomb towards him. Okay, my, uh, I can't fly, gonna... but I have limited flight. Like I can. Right, you've got an option here. Oh, I suppose yeah, you got limited flight, so you can glide over the sticky pudding. And land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'm let's just gonna... go. I'm just going to try and tackle that SOB and take that gun out of his hand, because, wow, what a gun. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Uh... Yeah, I'm not going for damage. I'm going for disarm. Okay, yep, let me know what you wrote. All right. Oh, I rolled double sixes. So, <laughs> so that's uh, 12 plus 5 is 17, plus another 3 in Monstrous Rampage is 20. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, that's an actual you... skill. I wasn't just being narratively poetic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you have grabbed someone. Um, and what, you just want to rip the gun out of his hands? Basically. Oh, yeah. No, I want that gun, and I'm going to point at him and be like, point made. Uh, bug hisses at you. Uh, do people want to take the next initiative round order thing? Or do you want to just switch back to kind of more narrative there immediately? I don't yeah, need uh... to kill Bug. I think yeah. you should have a bug though. Yeah, you've yeah, got like, I mean, you've got the your the scattergun fusel like in his face. You do also have your, your wizard hunter on the ground groaning uh unhappily. Yes, yeah, see to our homie. We've got a homie down. I go over and I t- open up a tin of pudding and I just start smearing it into the wound. Uh, okay, <laughs> that is not helpful. No. <laughs> I mean, or is it? I thought is provisions it? restored stamina. <laughs> is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> Apply I provisions think. directly to wound. Yeah. yeah. No. This is what a I do for myself whenever I'm hurt as a pudding. Yeah. Totally, yeah. Totally Press any key. Character. Where's the any key? Yep. Um, Chris, do you want to test your luck? See, see how it is? See how it is? See if you sure. are. Uh, how lucky oh, are you with God, putting in your wound? Uh, I regret writing this pudding background. Yeah, Aaron King apologizes for creating this background now, everybody. You should. Look what you've done. <laughs> he hasn't apologized yet. He does yet. heal you back up That's... to one stamina. but it doesn't oh, It's have true. He just expressed regret, not effect. apology. He, yeah, what uh... beast slouches towards Bethlehem? <laughs> So Bug is like hissing at you with his weird like snap as you've got this uh, gun jammed in his face. Um... I hate you. 
Whoa, whoa. This was a misunderstanding. My guy's a little web happy. Sorry about that. No. I just had to sneeze. Having friends, I hate you. Oh, I shoot him. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, you take him out. No, he's um, against friendship. F this asshole. <laughs> like he's going down just as not truck with that. This kind of antisocial behavior is how we get incels. He's going. He's dead. <laughs> That's the real friendship. Was the uh, the fusels we discovered? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bam. Yeah, he's. I assume half an ogre now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, you know, there's no top off to him anymore. Um, yeah, um, I just, you know, say something like '80s tagline," <laughs> and then, and, and then, and then keep my fusel, my pepper box fusel. Thank you, someone in chat, for saying this pepper box fusel because that's the name of my next novel, by the way. Um. So, uh, what's next? What's next? Like, do you just continue along your merry way at that point? How much ammo is in this thing? Uh, you check it. You've got another three squeezes before it needs reloaded. Ooh, ooh, that is three fascists to go. That is. <laughs> yeah, we can we can head back. We can just keep on heading back. Yeah. Wow. Right. So, um, you have an uneventful journey back to see Fishbone. Uh, Fishbone delightedly kind of uh, meows as they see the fucking plasma lane, the, the lion with the fucking burning mane, all these gibbons kind of troop in behind you. I say, what, what have you found here? You've, you've released some of them. Yes, excellent. We can use you all. Hello, fellow travelers on the winding roads of sentience. Delightful, delightful to see you. Kind of looks over. Um, and truly, you've done us a great service. We can use these. Yes, thank you. Come kind of introduce himself to Paul. Introduce himself to the lion. He still hasn't named himself, but seems fine with it. Um, lion. <laughs> um, the lion's got way more of an I am vibe, it seems like. So Yeah, I am. Yeah. Well, yeah. I am. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Um, yeah, so Space Lion, Gibbons, Cats. Lend me your ears, like... All we've got to do now is free the cows. And remember, look out for worm evidence. I cannot stress this enough. We are really blowing this. So we're going to need a paycheck after we get out of here. Um, uh, Fishbone, Fishbone said he knew where that evidence was. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Fishbone, <laughs> your time. You have given Let's... us what we need to liberate the livestock ourselves. <laughs> for you, he kind of hops down his big throne of books and... Adds over to you, jumps Aww. up on your shoulder. <gasps> Listen now closely, and I'll reveal to you the location. All of you simultaneously, somehow. Reveal to you the location of the uh, what you seek. You must find toilet of one of our owners. There is a hidden office within the darkness. Sorry, did you say toilet? I thought he said toilet. I did say toilet. Oh. Okay, so you're telling me there's a secret office in the shitter? Yes. Who would look there? Nobody. Fair. You think she's very clever. Oh. And rightfully so. Okay, fair. Um, does anybody have, like, a knife I can use real quick? I just want to etch this machine here kills fascists, too, on the side of my fusel. Fuck's sake. <laughs> cool. Noted. Um, okay, which bathroom on which floor? This floor. Seek, seek uh, Flavia's bathroom. You know it when you find it. This cat talks off. like the secret of Nim. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of cool, though. Right. Everyone else, we must prepare for the liberation. And they all start kind of, the dogs start closing their books with their noses. The cats work in teams to close their heavy tomes. Uh, the cats begin to like, mount up on the dogs' backs, like three to a dog, ready to go. Um, we shan't forget you, whatever your names are. And they begin to march in like a Just... formation out of the room. It doesn't really matter. They're, they're going there. <laughs> oh, they does. do ask for their nootropics back because they need them for the livestock. Oh, oh. Hmm. Who's holding? Uh, I think you're holding. Uh, 
Um, did you, I, I, um, did you absorb them in your pudding body? <laughs> we lost Sean again. The stream. So, so Sean had them. Then. The stream that's, that's for Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, I kind of pulled them out of my pocket, but in a way that empties about half of them back into my pocket. Yeah, I a, you know, he's a cat. He doesn't understand thumbs. Um, he, he, he seems fine. Um, <laughs> it seems fine. Yeah, and they, they all march out to go and take the lift upstairs um, and liberate their low-stock brothers. Um, well, shit. Well, that's a hell of a distraction. Let's beeline for this bathroom and use this revolution. Get out with the Ev. Be rich, be heroes, and be low key leaders of a revolution. Like, pretty, pretty banger first session. Yeah, so what, what, where, where do you want to end? Obviously, you kind of swept up and you end up back in that kind of the circle room with the mezzanine and the dead yeah. automata that you killed. Um, you're back there again. I think Sean's dropped again. Yeah, I, I, I corrected more. it on the, the right. overlay. Uh, yeah, did, we're going to look for the bathroom. Okay, so you kind of had to look around. There's nothing labeled bathroom from here, but you're kind of looking around. Uh, you can see there's Flavia's suite. Uh, there's something just marked consort room. There's Calixtus suite. Um, those are the, the ones that are in the, the cat had said Flavia's suite. Okay, let's let's let's. They said Flavia's bathroom, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go in there. Uh, I, I, I kick down the door and sweep with the futsal. You know, just standard standard tack up going hard here so you kick in the door um and inside is pure white marble chromed metal furnishings there's no decorations just hard sharp angles and the way the light falls across them um you can see there's like a large um kind of open plan wardrobe where there's lots of clothes made of weapons uh, there's like a knife there's like several different knife dresses like a razor blade skirt like that kind of thing Okay, do not fuck with this person. Got it. Um, they are definitely a goth. And like a really awesome one. Um, where's the bathroom? So you kind of poke around. Uh, you find one exit that looks like it leads to the bathroom. You also find one little break in this kind of cold, hard sterility where it's kind of a little nook with a collection of these like, kind of oil paintings and little mementos um, from like like almost like tourist trap type areas. And all hmm. of the oil paintings seemingly have like a, a happy couple in them. One of them looks very stern and serious and wearing like weapon uh, clothes. And the other one always is wearing a big golden barge pirate hat. And it's always a different one and it's always at a stupid angle, but they seem like really quite happy in each of these kind of paintings. Oh, okay. I'm gonna void sear that one to my my shoulder or something. Maybe I can return it to these wayward lovers after their family home burns down. Yes. Uh, but you do indeed find an entrance to a bathroom. There we go. Sean has returned. We're okay. in Flavia's bathroom. Flavia's the, the, so, the wayward family member who for you kind of a golden barge pilot. You troop in. Hmm. Uh, in here, it kind of it's like a faux natural grove like somehow the walls kind of fall away and it's just like kind of trees that lean over uh you can kind of hear the sound of like water gurgling like in a little brook or something there's mm -hmm. moss huddling everywhere and subtle bits of wood um you're kind of looking around beyond the kind of porcelain throne there is indeed just a kind of blackness that leads away into nothingness right we check where the cat said uh which was Behind the toilet? Or that's just, I assume, because drugs. Yeah, you can go and look in, in what, well, like directly behind the toilet? Or? Yeah, yeah. Like, if I'm going to have a lever to a secret office, it's going to be behind the shitter. Okay, so as you kind of step behind it, you find yourself kind of stepping into that, like, darkness. Uh, and as you kind of half step into it, it kind of fades a little bit. And you can kind of see gloomily what looks to be like some sort of room beyond the darkness. It kind of like half illuminates as you step towards it. Oh, there's a secret room here, just like the cat said. <laughs> Which doesn't make me ill. I, I mean that the cat told us. Okay, so you, are you gonna you gonna go check it out? Yeah, like fusel at the ready, like sweep style alpha protocol. Okay, let's see. Uh, one moment. 
Okay. Um, so you step into what is looks like a very small but quite serious study. Um, there's like neat, plainly labeled filing cabinets, uh, a single desk with like kind of that minimalism looks. There's hardly any stationery on it, but what is there's like really nice and high quality. Uh, the cabinets themselves are like yeah, like finance, uh, family business, like they're all kind of quite clearly labeled. Um, okay, what's I'm gonna stop putting pop before he starts making copies <laughs> like and let's check the ledgers for uh who here can read just s not embarrassed at all i think I, all of I us can read. Can read okay awesome anyone but pudding uh it's pudding <laughs> no silent oh gee yeah. no harley quinn it ain't pudding <laughs> like that's not. I can read. I can read. Excellent. I'm already, I'm already, volunteer. Half, I'm already halfway through reading it. No. <laughs> so <laughs> these are actually like really quite simple to understand. There's like a really effective filing system here, um, and you can. You, you're pretty sure if you spent like 20 minutes here, you could actually get a decent outline of what the fuck's happened here. Um, we spend the time. Yeah, there's an active revolution going on. We got 20 minutes. <laughs> So you kind of work your way backwards through all these different um, kind of financial documents, deeds of ownership, financial kind of statements. It looks like uh, the um, Prodromus family bought a large clutch of scarf worms from an adventuring group called the Band of the Wandering Plume. Uh, they could only afford this because they remortgaged their golden barge uh through a guy called seranos this dude then turned around and bought most of their shares in this uh clutch of worms ahead of time they also invested all of the staff's pension fund to rebuy back the, the that from seranos himself so it's like three levels of uh purchasing and repurchasing before they then seemingly sold it on to everyone else Wow, these people suck. <laughs> all right, well, this is the Ev. We, uh, let's take it all, right? Yeah. Not copies, originals. Yeah, originals, pudding. Sounds good, and I rip the pages out. <laughs> 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 Sounds great. <laughs> that was the only copy in existence. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I have it. <laughs> Would have been better if it was intact. Puts in pudding body. <laughs> Hold on, and I just I like I'll lick some of the, the pudding off the edge of my nose, and I'll just like just seal it back in there. Oh yeah, that's better. That's, oh, that's fine. That's exactly as we found it. They're gonna but... think it's got shit on it. We're gonna tell them we got it from a bathroom, and then hand this to them. Oh, fucking hell! Like so what I are think... you doing? I well, it's like that. if they're trying to destroy the evidence, and that's clearly just more. Yeah, but their uh, their problem. Oh, okay. So, they tried to flush it. Yeah, that's they tried that, to flush it. That's our it. story, and we're sticking to it. Uh, at this point, you've successfully found what you came here for, and thanks, thanks to revolution, you could slip so out well. pretty unobserved. Well, and, uh, and here's here's my question: Do we want to go down to the Golden Barge place and see if there's a, is there a barge park down there? Uh, you didn't see one when you were yeah, scouting the place out right. before, unfortunately. Um, despite me having a set of golden bars, it's right, like we could have made good use of those. <laughs> I think those are those are specific to each golden barge, though. So I don't I don't actually know where I got those. It's like new build houses; they share every fifth key is the same. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> good knowledge for all you listening at home. <laughs> awesome. And and remember, if you need a quick meal, you could take a receipt from the trash, go back inside to the counter at McDonald's, and say you didn't get my burger from the drive-through. 
Life hack. You're welcome. And let's do our reaction roll. Reaction roll is a live stream inside of a live stream. It's our chance to sit down with the creator of a game, or in this case, adventure that we just played and talk to them about what we thought about it today. We just finished playing The Big Squirm with Luke Gearing. It's live right now uh, over on Kickstarter. You can go to the link down below my face, ttrpg.link slash Big Squirm KS. Take you right there. Uh, just go to Kickstarter and search Big or and search big squirm uh if you've never played troika before this is a great place uh to hop in uh for uh luke why don't you tell us a little bit more for people especially who joined us late about who you are uh, what you do and tell us what people can expect when they get the big squirm in their own pudding covered hands uh so yeah, i'm luke and i write of adventures for various systems um yeah big squirm uh for those who didn't start. nominally it's a noir game although this one went slightly off the rails in the best way possible um and i think yeah so there's there's a lot of variety this was just one location kind of on a, a big a social dungeon almost uh investigation crawl um mm playing off a lot of different groups against one another and that's kind of a theme throughout where there's lots of different people who are very much interested uh and it should unfold under a kind of a, a slightly longer kind of set of sessions to play to have lots of mess and if you're running a long going campaign lots of sort of long-term ramifications um lots of people to piss off or sell information to yeah i popped up the the map of the kind of the overall area we were just in one of these uh buildings um there's also some just absolutely gorgeous art uh, that goes into this game. We've been able to put a, a few of them up. Uh, slight correction. I did put a picture of a pig person and not an orc up first. My mistake. Uh, I, we did correct it the second time around. So Ooh, that first picture you saw pretty, was not pretty embarrassing. Orc. Yeah, the second the second one was. Um, and so, uh, in my defense, they both had snouts and tusks and uh, they, they long, true. long flappy cloaks slash coats. And so... Um, I even second guessed myself before I did it, but I, I, I was wrong and I should have triple guessed. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Luke, uh, I had an absolute blast play. Let's whip around and hear from other, some of our other players. Also, if you're watching right now and you have questions about the adventure, uh, the project, or anything you want to subject Luke to at this point in time, uh, go ahead and uh, get those questions in the chat. If you're watching later, type in the comments. We'll try to get you an answer uh, also, too. Um, let's kick it up to, uh, to Sean F. Smith. Sean, why don't you tell people who you are, what you do, and uh, tell us a little bit about what it was like to play in the Big Squirm. So, hello everybody. I am uh, Sean S. Smith, as well as you've heard. Um, I'm a magician, game designer, writer, menace, various things. Um, and today I was playing quite a uh, quite a demure uh, wizard hunter as well, who was less ragey about wizard hunting. Um, and so one of the things I like about noir is... Uh, well, uh, actually, no, this, this is the other thing. Um, this was very much hard-boiled rather than noir. Um, and I kind of like mashed parts of bits from both which is perfect um what i really liked about it today particularly was the more we were doing the more it's obvious that a lot of what we were doing was bad like a load of <laughs> people they're like ah oh, i could be really violent now and like we well, could um which is the uh, the philosophical implications of that which i quite enjoy um, and also that it's almost like one of the major touchstones for me with this is a genre is like huge houses because the sheer amount of hardcore mm. stories where you've just got like a guy who's kind of bluffed his way into a house and it's just kicking around in this enormous house um and there's something about that and especially about just like the displays of opulence around everywhere um that i thought was great uh, i thought if uh, if lauren bacall were watching this she'd probably enjoy it <laughs> Lauren, are you here with us? <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, if you can, if you can speak, um, so you know uh, how to whistle. <laughs> um, no, that's that's uh, actually. Do you have any questions that you want to ask? I do. It's it's not directly about this, um, but it's more about you, I suppose. Um, in you know. uh, in that you've written for a load of different systems. Um, so like the, was it the, like the first of your products I've got is Think the Swamp, which is like I think Lamentations and mm. um, recently Mothership and Salvage Union and, and this, uh, this being Troika, of course. Um, do you feel 
that between them and especially between different moods and tones that you still have a through line of ah this is a loop gearing adventure because there's this um and if you don't what makes you you um That's just the existential <laughs> question yeah <laughs> So I think, like, one thing that... It's really weird analysing your own work, obviously. You know, other people might disagree or agree, but it's... um For me, like, a big focus for me is, like, place and geography. Like, I try and think a lot about what it is like to be in a place and try and make that the primary thing. Like, the people, I think, kind of evolve in play and kind of happen in play, but, like, the place and the setting are the thing where it all happens and, like, a lot of those smaller details impact everything else in a big way like you know fever swamp like oh man it sucks to be here and like here's ways to show that like narratively here's ways to show that like with rules um but it's about that place and what is the experience of being in that place so i think i think that's the through line is like everything's kind of a setting um and sometimes there's a thing happening that an adventure happening and sometimes the adventure is just being in a space and being like damn this place is fucked up usually but um yeah i think that's the through line but obviously it's weird analyzing your work like that sean do you have a counterpoint you want to make like do you, do you have an answer you really wanted from luke <laughs> what do you think no, makes luke gearing luke gearing <laughs> no, I, I think that fits really well, actually. Like, definitely, my experience with running some of the modules you've had is that they feel they feel placey. Like, they very much feel like physical spaces that have been there for a period of time and have impacted how people are act, like uh, like move around in them, how people kind of like consider themselves near them. So, yeah, I think that's a good answer. I'm glad it's coming through. <laughs> um... Awesome. Let's hop over to uh, one of my one of my favorite adventure writers. When I think about adventures, I think about Chris Bissett. Chris, why don't you tell people who you are, uh, what you do, and what it's like to play the big squirm? That was rad. Uh, my name's Chris Bissett. I write things for games. Um, we did, we played Troll King and Blue Light on this channel. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah with Sean. Um, yeah, I do a lot of stuff. Um, constantly trying to be as good as luke and constantly failing um that was really fun i my favorite thing about troika is the absolute chaos that happens when you put a lot of random backgrounds together and i think we uh we saw that tonight <laughs> Um, and, I, and I like how this was also luke did put a line like nothing too crazy and this is what we ended up with also yeah, yeah. hey mine was a core troika background <laughs> <laughs> yeah these were these were the tame options like these were the uh, things that we were like okay that's fine that's fine yeah um what what i want to know is what's your favorite thing in the adventure that we didn't see Ooh, that's a big one um so like obviously it's being a one shot you don't get to do this as much but there's a whole thing where all these other like the the ogre bug the ogre he was another investigator and there's a whole subsystem for like them having their own clues and like trading clues between each other and maybe feeding each other false information and then you backstab and there's like an evolving relationship you have with these characters that keep appearing every time uh so that's why that i think that's the part for me because i love dynamic elements that i as a person writing it, i've got no idea how that's going to turn out because it's all kind of semi-randomized it's up to the players that's my favorite shit because it's like I don't know, you, you tell me what happened and then it's fun for me because I get to find out like, oh yeah, we totally betrayed Bug and he was turned out he was planning on betraying us and it was really cool. Uh, you know, and it's like that happened over four sessions or something and like we also teamed up with a different investigator like uh, the one who's a pigman and it was like, yeah, we became best friends or whatever. Um, so that's the that's my favourite part that didn't get to get highlighted but nature of the format. Um yeah. Also, you tried really hard to to highlight it, and then I just sneezed in the guy's face too. I no, it's it. fine if you didn't trust the ogre. <laughs> that's usually the right choice. Yeah. Uh, wow. I did not expect that at all. I thought that was going to be totally normal. That you just sneezed web at the dude. <laughs> oh no, he's he's yeah, bugs piece of shit. He was absolutely planning on betraying you. Um, oh. So it's very cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, Matt K, your first time gracing the stream, why don't you tell people who you are and what it was like to play the big squirm? Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Matt K. I'm a freelance editor uh, for RPGs exclusively. There are there are six of us. Um, 
maybe seven now. It's a big world, all right? Uh, I've worked mostly on Troika, Mothership, um, Independent Systems, Print Weaver is a weirdo I'm working on right now that I actually absolutely adore. I oh, love Print beautiful. Weaver. Yeah, because it's, anyway, I don't want to gush about another thing right now, but uh, I'm a big fan of Luke's work, um, as Luke well knows. Um, I often use Fever Swamp as an example when I do developmental editing to talk about how hex calls and similar things can establish things, say them, and then move the hell on. Um, just, just don't condescend to your reader by explaining the crap out of things. Like we get it; it's not something you're used to. Uh, let it breathe. Let it let the let the words kind of like suffuse into the reader enough. They're they bought your book after all. Um, so my question is then, with that somewhat uh, ham-fisted segue, is does is does the adventure revolve around this house um, exclusively? And like, does is is the house meant to be the central location, or is the house just like one of the many sort of like facets it's, that can go there? It's definitely like the biggest area. Like mm -hmm. Kind of uh, if it was like a video game, you'd call it the tent pole area. But right. Like it's definitely it's a big area, but it's definitely not the only area. And I think it's an interesting one because like depending how your players play it. You cannot go to any of the areas and just trade clues between different people and just work out most of the mystery kind of doing that and just go to the few places you need. If your players are really savvy, good at connecting the dots and really good at cutting deals with people. Um, it's kind of it's weird to do a mystery adventure that doesn't kind of fall into that like linear scene structure because then you have yeah. to flow. Whereas this, it's just like there's a lot of people, they know stuff they trade that information between them and it's kind of it's a little more non-linear like there's just these kind of clues traces everywhere oh, which means there's a lot of entry points into different places but yeah no it's not the main area but it is kind of the biggest it's the most kind of traditional in that way like it is kind of almost a social dungeon crawl like i said um but there's a lot of other stuff going on that's all kind of tonally quite distinct which is good so then my follow-up to that is um because you're you set this in the city of troika which a million third party things have, have attempted to do or hinted at, right? What is the city of Troika and how does it shift and change? Um, how did you adjudicate what to land on and saying this is this is because Troika is like this? Um so for me, like because obviously Troika is kind of a anything goes place, so I kind of just lean into that mm -hmm. and just be like if it sounds like it would fly, it flies, like it's kind of like you know it when you see it, if it's Troikan or not. Um, so for me, it's very much like a big fucking mess where it's like a libertarian, horrible paradise for them. Like it's, you know, like if, if you've got the money and yeah, power, you yeah. away with it. Like it sucks um, if you aren't obscenely rich. Um, but yeah. it's also a place where it's like a real melting pot. So there is like that kind of cool element. But this is very much in the tradition of noir. It's about simultaneously like the high life and the low life, like the super powerful and rich and also kind of the... Um, the lump and proles that they use to do the dirty work so it kind of flips between the two and then being brought down by those very same lump and proles because of their own petty investments and yeah, their own exactly yeah yeah, okay. yeah 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 all right that's awesome <laughs> thank you yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome it was a lot of fun um and the fact that you managed to contain juz into reasonable <laughs> decisions um <laughs> that's a that's a pretty good that's that's an indicator of a good book so i'm pretty excited for it uh, i had a blast uh, a couple questions from the chat though before we dive into my thoughts um uh nate just wants to know luke do you have a favorite noir film or novel uh, the washington really post <laughs> <laughs> um I think like a lot of it comes from I watched Tiny Town when I was far too young. My cousin showed it to me, and he was like, "Oh, this is fucking sick!" And it was like that made a big impression. Obviously, um, I've read a lot of Chandler. Really like Chandler. Obviously, um, I also did like some of the hardboard stuff as well, like Red Harvest and whatnot. Like that's that's pretty tight. Like Red Harvest is weird. It kind of flies by. It's just very vicious. Um, there's also some like other hardball stuff like uh, Rage and Harlem's really good, very different. Um, but that's also one like Chester Himes. Yeah, Chester Himes, Rage and Harlem is one I'd definitely recommend for an author who's not well as well known, but definitely worth reading. Um, more hard boiled than necessarily noir, but yeah, pretty good one. Awesome. Uh, and then Offender Defender has two questions. Uh, uh, the one pertaining to the big squirm is they're anticipated about play length. Uh, for the book, it's given that it's quite large. So, how do you see it's, people using this, and how what do you 
you know, how many hours is it going to take to uh, sit down and solo my way through this RPG? Us, uh, it's 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 probably like a mini campaign almost. I'd say depending how you want to do it. Like it's definitely not. Uh, oh, we bung this book dungeon in there and they do it in three sessions. You know, it's definitely like an an evolving thing, which in some ways might get stronger the longer you run it for because there's more kind of interconnectedness that will go on with like the different investigators playing off once against one another. Um, depending how long your sessions are, because my perspective will probably run for like an hour and a half. Um, in terms of like two to three hour sessions you could probably get like i reckon 10 is not a bad estimate so that's about 30 hours of play maybe but that's a real ballpark figure i'm not i'm not 100 i'm not gonna stake any money on it put it that way it depends on how many existential conversations your characters <laughs> want to have as they're living yeah. the minds of animals they were very straightforward i resent this i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> Uh, no, and the other question is, and it was the conversation in the chat earlier, but can you confirm or deny that Fever Swamp uh, reprint and remaster is coming? Mm. And they said they've heard uh, rumors, but they also heard rumors in the chat. So I don't, you know, who knows? If inquiring I'm... minds. I don't know if I'm allowed to confirm it. Uh, <laughs> which is that, a great way to answer totally... that question. You can just stop there. That's great. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do you work for the USSR Space Agency? Like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what? Um, you're not American. You can't yeah. say the fifth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, if you're on a stream, stream, stream law applies. Um, yeah. No, that's great. Uh, I had a blast. I was super excited to see it. Always love getting a chance to. I think this is actually the first time I've gotten a chance to play anything for Troika that you have written. Um, so it's great to do it. It's the first time you got you and I got to play together. Uh, I love how right into what you got. I do love, especially reflecting on some of what you said to. Uh, Chris, the ability for your characters to just kind of wander around and no matter how bad they are at the exploring of the space, still be able to just bump into enough people and experience enough things to make the connections, which is very much how noir and hard-boiled stuff works. Like, you might end up with the crap beat out of you at the bottom of a gutter and a clear vision as the light fades from your eyes on what exactly went wrong. That's a very cool thing to be able to see uh, inherent in the game. I think my question comes down to... A little bit more about both the clues thing and the factions that are in play here, because um, it's something that was specifically listed. There's a, there's a number of factions that are moving that are working around each other. Um, and this could be a GM question or it could be a design question, because I don't know which way is the better way for you to answer this. Um, but is there consideration given mechanically to how factions in the NPC trading work, or is it just a narrative process? And if so, uh, how do you run that? Um, like, how, What are your favorite ways to run that? So yeah, it's like yes and no. So like the factions, there isn't necessarily a like faction points thing, but for each of them, it's like here's what here's their goals, here's what they want to do, their methods, how they're going to achieve it. Each of them probably including hiring the player characters, uh, and then the rewards. So if you are working for them, here's the kind of thing they might give you. So like as an example, the first one, uh, like so one of the employers could be the Yongardi House of Law. Um, mm -hmm. So the stuff they want to do, they want to calm everything down, they want to have huge and expensive trials by combat, and they want to prosecute anyone who's guilty, because they're the house of law. Uh, the ways they might do that is like hiring the player characters, dispatching paralegal paramilitary gangs, um, <laughs> as well as arresting people and holding them for combat by trial. And then stuff like, then there's the reward. So like maybe you get access to the judicial combat training school, so you'll finally learn how to use that weird weapon you found or whatever. Um, so it's not like it's not mechanical as something like strictly mechanical, but it is like kind of a you've given a bit of a framework to build it from. Oh, I love that. Uh, and then for the clues, it is a little more kind of um, NPCs that you meet, not just the other investigators. There's like a D66 table of different clues that people might have, who they learnt it from, where that person might be found. So that also kind of sneakily acts as a way to inject even more color. So it's like you roll the dice. It's like, oh, there's an unlicensed assassin contractor set up here, and you found out about that from Nervous Hannah, the fishwife. And she's hanging out at Cutnib Spirits and Sundry, and all of those are kind of pegged to the map. Um, and there's like kind of a system, like it just kind of suggests that uh, we'll, you know, that you write down the stuff that different people know and you kind of trade the facts and go from there, as well as like where they might store the facts. So somebody might store it, uh, just in a briefcase, someone else might store it as a mixture of gases that you have to inhale to learn the information and then they exhale to keep it safe so that it can't be like interrogated for the information or whatever. Like it's suitably so, troikan. 
so would you say the piece of evidence that we found near the end would have in no way been the ultimate like nail in the coffin it would have just been a piece of a larger puzzle oh yeah that's a step in the chain yeah exactly like it's, okay. a, it's, it's, it's a pretty big link that you found because it kind of joins a lot of other things together but there's mm -hmm. a few there's a few different directions you could follow that one uh depending on who was employing you and what they wanted there because it might be a case of like one person might be like oh go chase down the band of the wandering plume it's their fault and someone else might be like what's going on with this bank dude and like that sounds like some financial fraud go check that out depending on their own interests and the players might be like fuck it we're self-employed now we're gonna go for both of them i love that you didn't make us stick our heads into the the void toilet and just inhale gas deeply to figure out that information. <laughs> oh, I should have uh, thought i'm a little disappointed honestly yeah i'm with luke on this one like missed opportunity stretch well, yeah i mean i was i just didn't want to i just didn't want to neg luke on stream right now but yeah i was disappointed <laughs> also too actually no um, it's all changing before uh, now We've been able to pot some of it up. It's also surrounding us. Beautiful art by um, by Andrew Walter, uh, whose stuff is constantly thrills me, uh, and I think just brings Troika stuff to life uh, so well. Um, any other things you're really excited for people to be able to see or discover as they kind of explore the campaign or the the book? Oh, that's a tough one. Try, it's very hard to uh, it's like the the stereotype. It's very hard to like nail it down to a couple of different things. Um, Oh, the pirate ship is pretty great. Uh, there is a crew of a golden, uh, golden barge pirate crew who's mutinied, uh, and they are currently trying to determine what the name of their ship is, as well as just what they're going to do in general. And I think that's a super fun social encounter that has uh, a lot of different ways it can go. Uh, so I'm really excited to hear what people end up doing with the, depending who you ask, the floating autonomous orb or zone you know, depending. Awesome. Uh, I'm super excited about it. Like I said, uh, I think if this is your first time uh, looking at Troika, or if you're somebody who's like, I've wanted to get into Troika, but haven't known where to start, uh, this is great. Luke does phenomenal adventures um, and has created uh, tremendous settings that are, are much beloved in the system. And seeing this kind of campaign length uh, space is a good place to start if you want to do more than just a, a simple one shot or just to poke around with a simple one shot also too. Um, we'll have a full review with some of our thoughts coming out um, probably early next week, um, but I'm super excited to share that with everybody also too. Um, a couple other things we've got coming up that everybody should be aware of. Uh, no other streams this week because we're getting ready for uh, Exalted Funeral Con 2022. Uh, I know what you rolled last summer. Um, it's a spooky <laughs> horror, <laughs> horror camp theme uh, filled with excitement excitement um we've got uh panels including uh folks like chris Bissett. we're going to talk about uh adventure design along with chris uh jason cordova and zedek sue uh very excited about that panel oh, we've also yeah. got um uh, some other tremendous panels and panelists like sean mccoy uh and some other great folks um we have additionally um tons of games i think at this point there's almost 40 games that have been submitted and more coming in we'll have finalized that schedule by wednesday uh, and people will be able to sign up for the games that they they want to play for each round of things um next year we'll have a little bit more time on all that stuff but this year it is what it is uh we'll also be announcing a full list of the panels hopefully uh tomorrow as well and we'll have a couple other cool live games live stream things uh if you're live at the event which we're using gather uh to house it i keep on saying we because we are partnered with exalted funeral on it here at plus one exp um uh, we'll be using gather which is a digital space you can navigate around we're hoping that lends itself to great things like hallway conversations catching up with people you haven't ever met other than uh, in other digital platforms where you maybe weren't able to chat face to face. If you're like, I don't want to be seen, that's fine. Uh, you can stay in ghost mode the entire time or just turn off your camera and it'll be able to see you. It'll just be your voice. Um, we want people to engage in whatever way is comfortable. Safety tools will be in play uh, at all games. You should be able to come, feel comfortable, have a good time. And if you have any issues, let one of the staff members know. Um, you can find more about that at ttrpg.link slash EFCon. We'll be playing um a a we a three two one action rpg adventure this weekend uh while they are also screening the movie the schlock 80s film that that movie is based on uh, at the same time we're going to play an rpg version of it we're going to be playing uh land of eam uh live on stream in addition to hosting some of the panels so uh if you can't join us the entire time and just want to watch the free content online hit subscribe here or follow here uh, and get access to all those things uh, but more than anything go check out ttrpg.link slash big square MKS. Sean, did you raise your hand because you wanted to say the cool games you're going to be running? No, I am. Um, I did the whole like smash that subscribe. Button. Smash that subscribe. Yeah, button. that's definitely. I just want to make sure if you wanted to, if you want to talk about Exuvier or Dragonfly D6 or Quarrel and Faber or whatever else you're going to be running. Um, search for my name. 
and the word noir, and you'll find some. There that's go. the uh, that's the feed I'll give you. Awesome. It's all about bugs. Awesome, uh, Luke. Good luck on moving. Uh, everybody in the UK, good luck on surviving uh, the heat wave that uh, you know surrounds you at this moment in time. My uh, laptop didn't survive the heat wave. <laughs> your laptop did not survive oh. the stream. Yeah, Sean's laptop was overheating. That's why that's why I keep on bouncing in and out. Uh, but until next time, we've never figured out a good way to close streams. And at this point, we're not going to. So we're just going to wave at the camera. until Excelsior. Take Thank you for playing, everyone. It was really good. Really good fun. <laughs>